Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. Let's continue with space exploration. Wherein I've done a little bit of tidying up on the old outpost. Uh, and we're a lot closer to having a nice, neat, minimalistic outpost here on Verbti. Uh, one of the closest planets to our home planet. So let's continue with that, shall we? Um, first of all, I want to make sure this is nice and neat. Max distance up here. Veldak and Twisty P. Good to see you go. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let me just double check. I think that's right. Cool, cool, cool. Just chuck in wide area beacon over here for now. That's not a beacon. A wide area pylon. How's that? Can't reach. There we go. Glacier Wolf. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so let's plan out our power poles over here. That's perfect, actually. And Fantastic. And I think we're going to need one down here. Perfect. I might just shorten that a little bit, actually. And this way... Uh, where are we going? Blue Lightning DT. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Grab the old diagonal power poles. Over this way. Oh, that reaches. Nice. And... Uh, I guess put a wide one down here. No, that doesn't work. Can I not make this all nice and neat? Dag nabbit. Damn it, dag nabbit. Close enough. Just pretend you didn't see that. And up we go this way. Uh, I glanced at chat at the wrong microsecond, and now we're over here. There we go. Does that actually cover it? Almost. Uh, I guess I'll do this. And then... Over this way. Grab the diagonals. And... A couple of wide ones. Should actually cover that. Fantastic. Up we go. And across. And this will probably have to do, I guess. Alright, time to grab some more drills. Um, I did find most of what I needed um, to finish the outpost without going back. But we did still have to go back for space train power packs, as it turns out. We'll just drop those in here. Start charging. Fantastic. Whoops. And then... Well, let's get out. Oh, I forgot to pick up the drills. Uh, damn it. Gimme, gimme drills. Uh, where am I? There we go. All the drills. That's probably enough. Uh, should I start by putting these down here? Probably. Alright, let's go south. And drill. And 
and drill. Philip B, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How's the trees treating you? Not really a problem since I realized uh, the impulse rifle one hit kills them in a line. And a decently length line at that. Alright, so these are already powered. We just have to drop off the drills. And let me just check that these ones are all working right. One, two, three, four. Fantastic. Very good. Even better. And this one's good as well. Just need, just need to do these two. And up we go. That's too easy. What's too easy? The, uh... The impulse rifle. Uh... I thought I saw a ghost here, but then I realized if there's one, two, three, four of these with stuff in them, then it must be working. Uh, we've got the exact same station names on these planets as every other one. No need to worry about the train schedule. Uh, I thought I saw a missing signal, but no, we're good. I'm still on SE.5. I just have rocket silos surrounded by six miners. As in core mining drills. Remember my outpost on, like, I think it was this planet, if not this planet, uh, in the last solar system. Uh, it was a very large planet with, um, Vidimlange. But chock full of biters. But I just landed in the middle of a big pond and made landfill. And filled it with, uh, core mining drills. How... Dare they nerf that approach into non-existence? Who could possibly say that that's too cheesy? And this one already has... How does this one already have... Items? It must have been powered earlier. Yeah, yeah, it was. I forgot. All right, as long as it's working. My setup... Uh, where's my browser? Why isn't it open? Oh, I can see it by mousing over it. Oh my god. Are you sure that's aggressive enough? And over this way as well. I need more... Roboports, I think. I'm not liking the short range. And we'll just fly across here and let the bots catch up when we get there. Did I just cliff explode for that one? Oh well. More important to make it all neat and tidy. And one, two, three, and four. Fantastic. Don't forget the bots. Uh, am I going to do at least one, two, three more drills? Maybe four? Um, before we trim the surface. We'll see how many drills we've got and how far we are into diminishing returns. Okay. Power poles need to go north from here. And then... Drill goes one, two, three, and four. Beautiful. Down we go. And across. And one, two, 
one more over yonder. Fantastic. One, two, three, and four. Beautiful. Uh, so that's all of them working, right? Let's just double check. Search for entity. We need to see uh, one, two, three, four containers with core fragments on each one of these. So far, so good. And we've only got 13 so far. We could definitely go for a few more drills. Um, not too deep into diminishing returns yet. But we're already getting 33.25 core fragments per second. That's actually quite good. So I'd like to get three more. How about one? Um, how do I get three more and minimize the trim size? We could go one, two. The third one is kind of a problem. How about one, two, three, four? Maybe? Or I could just leave it like this until we have a holmium shortage and then I could go for even more. Assuming that we ever will have a holmium shortage because it's relatively easy to keep up with. We only had the two core mining drills for a very long time. Although that was somewhat supported by some finite mines on our main planet. In any case, we'll see if this is enough. And if not, we'll just come and make some more. Easy peasy. Uh, if, I, if I do end up going like high throughput at the end of the playthrough, depending on how much UPS we've got left, uh, we'll probably end up just... Putting core mine, uh, putting down every possible core mining drill on verb T. So yeah, that is our outpost now. Let's get our trains going. What's the ideal train size for Spellevator? Uh, infinitely long. However, we did the math. Um, the efficiency, like the the cable cost per cargo slot for a train with two cargo wagons well this is assuming a locomotive on the other end as well i guess but two cargo wagons compared to four cargo wagons it was really small like it's not really worth worrying about um but yeah the longer the train uh where is it Parts cost per minute, plus five item stacks up. Oh, I don't think it even costs you for a locomotive. No, five plus item stacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it costs more to go up than go down, but you'll probably be going both ways in any case. Um... I don't think the locomotives really count. It's just the cargo slots. Although it's not clear on how much it costs to take fluid wagons through. Huh. In any case, um... No, I could have sworn... Yeah, yeah, 5 plus. So like... 100 stacks versus 200 stacks? Um, the 5 plus, like, it doesn't make that much difference. I have six wagons, wagon trains now. I will use eight in next playthrough then, indeed. Yeah, I, I don't remember the actual number, but, well, we could do the math right now, actually. Um, let's say we have two cargo wagons. 5 plus... Uh, it's this times 5 plus 100. 
105 times 0.0027. I guess I could just ignore the multiplier, right? Uh, so 105 versus... Uh, this is 105 to move 100 stacks versus like 205 to move 200 stacks. Um... Actually, multiplying it by the thing, 0.0027. So we're looking at uh, 0.55 cables for the longer train, or 0.28 cables for the shorter train. So multiply that by 2. 0.57 to do the shorter train twice. It's fairly negligible. It's like a couple of percent, if that. Oh, I meant to get the charged packs. We've only got 12? I forgot how slow this is. I should probably... Oh no, we've got more over here. 20 and 20. Okay, cool. Um, so we'll get some of our trains started. If they run out of fuel, they run out of fuel. I'll just come and get them again. about one two three get the first two going and stacker number three core fragment pickup fantastic wait what no 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 stop 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 i definitely remember deliberately manually disconnecting those from each other and yet here we are uh, is it T, uh, G or V? It's V. Okay, you sir. Go back this way, and I wouldn't be surprised if there is some other core fragment pickup you could go to. Not yet. Um, how about I just temporarily make this one not have a train limit? And then change that back to 4k, and this should still work, probably. Yeah, 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 that should be fine. What does Spellevator eat? Just energy or also some items? Uh, it eats space elevator cables, which need to be made from... Uh, Holmium Cable, Heavy Girder. It's one Girder, one Holmium Cable, two Coal, and three Aeroframe Poles uh, for each Space Elevator Cable, if we ignore the Productivity Bonus. So it's not entirely cheap, except the rate of consumption... Uh, it's like less than five on the biggest planet. Uh, it's like less than five per minute on the biggest planets. Uh, ignoring the cost of sending trains up and down. So it's not that bad. That's fine, indeed. Do both trains still have the proper schedule? They would, yeah. They do. So what's this guy's pro- Oh, right, I forgot. Destination full. Oh, it's trying to go to core fragment pickup. Oh, it doesn't have a path. It's- I need to fix the schedule. Uh, what's this called? This planet? Verb T? Verb T down, verb T up. And remove that one. And bring this one up here. Switch this to manual. So that I can copy, paste the schedule. Uh, I went past it, didn't I? There we go. Are you full already? Yeah, you should be. Alright, up the elevator you go. And there's our first core fragments up the new space elevator. Psh. 
Fantastic. All right. Um, and I just need to get some more fuel for this one. Not the problem I expected, indeed. But we caught a problem anyway. Uh, we still have no charged power packs here because why? Because the train took some, that's why. We'll give the rest of these to the third train and I hope it works out. Wait, what? Did I... F was this empty? Or... Did control click mess that up? No, it didn't. It must have been empty here. Alright, let's double check all our trains. Um, you're good. And you are... Fantastic. Okay, and we can now put this on the stacker schedule. And now it's waiting to go to Core Fragment Pickup. Should get plenty of time. Wait, I thought this would have lots of Core Fragments in it. Nope, not that many. Individually, they're only 2.5577 per second. So we're going to get a burst of stations ready for pickup in about 26 minutes. Or a bit less. Sigma Bean, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Sorry I almost missed you there. Um, And yeah, apart from cleaning all this mess up, which I think I'll do off stream... Um, I think that's our new outpost ready. So, it's probably ready to start reporting that it's good to go. Uh, signal 4, I think we set this up already. Uh, not quite. Okay, this is signal 4. I'm not going to bother with an offset yet. Uh, we're looking for Holmanite core fragments. The address is Moon Orbit 1176. Just double check that. Moon Orbit 1176. So if Moon Orbit equals 1176, output S as signal 4. If it's positive, and then uh, if moon orbit equals uh, one one seven six, output everything input count, and then check that hominite core fragment is greater than signal four, and if so, pass it through to the memory cell. Cool, cool, cool. So currently we're waiting to send a ship to pick up Iridite. Uh, if we're lucky, the next ship will be sent here. Nice. Oh, I like this, um, actually. We can see approximately just how saturated we are back at main base uh, for each type of core fragment. We can see that we've got tons of Iridium core... F not Iridium, uh purple stuff. Immersite core fragments, and as we've, we've got a start, we've got a little bit of saturation on barrel. Speaking of barrel, the thing we've been slow on for a very long time that is now catching up. Um, let's check our production. Barrel. First of all, core fragments. Uh, obviously, 
have been a bit faster lately. We can tell from this dip that the spaceships aren't keeping up. Um, but at this point, the spaceships aren't keeping up because we're saturated back at base. So that's fine. That's very good, actually. Beryllium, ingot, and plate. Um, is obviously a lot higher than it was historically. And a lot less spiky. So that's cool. Maybe I'll have to do more beryllium production. Maybe I'll update the uh, blueprint for that. Um, but suffice to say... I'm hoping... Pretty soon we'll get to see... A ship sent... Why is this one not launching? Because it's still got purple core fragments. Um, barrel drop-off and iridium drop-off. Looks like they might not keep a ship stuck here. Fantastic. Um, and I wonder where all of our ships are right now. Heading back to Hagen Orbit with, uh, Iridite. Uh, heading out to our second latest outpost. I believe that one is Beryl. Yes, 816. Uh, trying to land at Hagen Orbit with Purple. Landed at Hagen Orbit with Beryl. No, wait, it's picking up Beryl. This is Exorion, I can tell, because no other outpost would be so slow. Um... Surely enough, that is Ixorion. Uh, getting to Foenestra to pick up Beryl again. Heading to... Oh, landed at Hagen Orbit. We saw this one already. It's waiting to drop off a bit more Immersite Cave Core Fragments. Is that a third ship that's locked up on Immersite? Here we go. Dropping off... Iridite, fantastic. With any luck, we'll see this one. Oh, wait. No, no, no. I think that one will get sent for Iridite, because Central is still waiting to dispatch to it. Oh, I don't think I've done... I knew I was missing something. <laughs> uh, Dispatch should be able to send a ship here, but we don't have a drop-off for it yet, for Holmanite Core Fragments. So let's get that done next. But it will be able to send a ship here. T-Hax, have you had time to read the story about Ty, the savior of the stars? Uh, I actually forgot to read it. And I've been melting. Not as much as before, though. It's getting better. Bidrith, Xiong, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How long is this, by the way? It's like a few paragraphs, right? Once upon a time, there was a Tyrannosaurus Rex named Ty. Not your ordinary T-Rex, as he was fascinated by technology. <laughs> and loved playing computer games. I like where this is going already. Um, would it be too much to call this uh, memory cell that I invented a T-cell? The one that remembers the first input and ignores everything else. Okay, uh... I really want to see... a ship get dispatched to this location, but it might be a minute. We've got Ion Hauler 10 coming back in. With Barrel. It got damaged! Okay, we really need to upgrade our lasers because another 120 hit points and and it would have been drifting in space somewhere. 50 seconds plus change and we're going to see if uh, if this gets sent. Oh wait, no, I can check on the memory cell here. That is barrel again. Okay then. 
I mean, we do need tons of barrel right now. Oh, also, we have to... I forgot, we have to get, like, 18,000 or so Holmanite core fragments before a ship is going to be sent here. So, there's that. So we'll check back in here a bit later to confirm it's all working. In the meantime, let's go back to Hagen Orbit. And let me read the rest of this, if I have time. One day he discovered a game called Factorio and became obsessed with it. In Factorio, Ty explored a vast virtual world, building factories and resource-gathering facilities. He managed production lines, automated vehicles, and constructed massive spaceships. ChatGTP is amazing. The game was a perfect match for Ty's love of problem-solving and his desire to build. As Ty continued to play, he found himself becoming increasingly immersed in the game world. He felt as if he was exploring an entirely new universe and was fascinated by the endless possibilities. He wanted to see what else was out there, so he built a spaceship and set out into the virtual cosmos. To be continued. And clap. Fantastic. Uh, how many... We don't have more spaceship floor yet, do we? Nope. I wouldn't expect it yet, because... I've made sure that this is a lower priority. Oh, this is barrel plate, though, that we're waiting on. Uh, I'm pretty sure beryllium plate has a priority 1,000 something somewhere. Yeah, here it is. Because we desperately need uh, barrel sticks to make sure we get spellivator cable. And we're still... We're still playing catch-up on space elevator cable, but not really. Uh, I could probably drop the massive priority on this for a minute, but... But... We'll get there soon, don't worry. Alright, uh, before I forget... We actually need to build... Holmanite Core Fragment drop-off block. So first thing I'm going to do is copy this one. Uh, don't include trains and train fuel, train stop names, sure. And definitely include tiles. Um, and this here is supposed to be... What? What am I doing? This here is supposed to be Holmanite Core Fragment drop-off. Don't try to make the spaceship... Oh, I'm going to have to, like, remove that from the blueprint, aren't I? Well, for now, let's just send our scaffolding train. It remembers the context, so I can add another prompt and it'll just continue the story. Very, very cool. I'm really excited to see what people come up with who otherwise didn't have the tools. Like, uh... Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 wait. Like, obviously they don't exist yet, but imagine more powerful tools for making video games driven by AI. So many people who don't have the education or the time or whatever are suddenly going to be able to deliver something resembling their vision. The West dude liked a story in which Wes warning the world about fungi controlled minds, then the apocalypse happened. And everyone was gone. Wes was eaten by Fungi last, but his mind survived. <laughs> Overtaken Fungi Collective, and he managed to save the world. 
That sounds exactly like the bizarre logic of a dream. Alright, let me grab this real quick. Um, entities, tiles, train stop names. Fantastic. And then we have to change it as soon as we get there. Uh, I think the train stops, they're all the same, except I like to change the station name on each one for the drop-off. Uh, and the pickup, obviously. We don't have to worry too much. Hmm. Let me put a tile here first. To make sure a spaceship doesn't randomly land there. Uh, can I get some scaffolding real quick? No, it has to be not just scaffolding, but like an actual thing, right? I'm just going to go over there real quick. Make sure a ship doesn't accidentally land here while we're working on it. Turn off my robot port. And I'm just going to put down a little bit of scaffolding and some kind of building. It doesn't matter what. Wait, that might not even be in the way of the shorter ships. There we go. Can you just body block the ship with your body? Uh, yes. Yes, you can. Alright. Uh, construction train. Please come over here for a moment. Um, now I need to set the clamp ID. Everything else, uh, unfortunately slash fortunately, blueprints don't include the channel for signal transmitters and receivers. So none of that is going to cause any problems yet. Um, so what was it? We're doing Holmanite. And here's our little... I think dictionary is the wrong term. Pulmonite is going to be ID 15. So the ship's nowhere to land. And then we can get rid of these. Um, and once... Oh my goodness. How many trains are on their way here? The answer is yes. Alright, this needs to be set to central clock. Yes. And we're just, we don't even need a combinator, we're just transmitting whatever type of core fragment happens to be in this container. Uh, we need to change the filter, well not filter, the request on the requested chests to Hormonite core fragments. It actually doesn't try to apply any settings to any other type of thing. Okay. Oh. Really? Oh, wow. We already have a ship with uh, Holmanite core fragments. Well, there you go. <laughs> Working as intended. Um, we need more Logibots. They should already be... in here? No? There might be a train on the way with Logibots. Yeah, here it comes. P3 Cottontail, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, so what other things do I need to change here? This needs to look for Holmanite core fragments. This needs to report a signal for Holmanite. I mean, it's an arbitrary signal, but this obviously makes a lot of sense. Um, Wager, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Kind of scared me. Nice. Spooky, scary spaceships. Uh, looks like there are no trains headed for this station right now, so I can get away with updating the station name. Not that it really matters. 
Core Fragment Holmanite. And down here... Whoops, 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 whoop. Stop bouncing. This is Holmanite Core Fragment. Holmanite Core Fragment. Holmanite Core Fragment. And Holmanite Core Fragment. Fantastic. Uh, looks like pretty soon we'll have to make a train for Holmanite Core Fragments. Um, do I need to change anything else here? All of this is generic. That is also generic. Yeah, there's uh, surprisingly little that we have to update in these. Alright, so let's see. Dispatch, ready ships, central dispatch. And we need to do our channel for Holmanite Core Fragment Dispatch. Uh, I just need to make a station real quick. So I can do a symbol like this. Holmanite Core Fragment Dispatch. Why do I suddenly feel like that's not how you spell dispatch? Anyway. This is Holmanite Core Fragment Dispatch. These two are already set. This one is already set. And then this one needs to transmit to Holmanite Dispatch. Uh, and it should now be possible... Uh, if our ship is ready, which it is not. We've got fuel, we don't have water. Uh, we're still melting the ice to get this up to 80% full. That's why we, that's why the water flowed out. It's fine. We have fuel, we don't have water. The bots are, uh, this thing is not empty of hominite core fragments and the bots are still moving. So three more conditions need to be met before it reports that this ship is ready. Uh, and then we might see it launching. There are actually zero ships ready to launch right now. So all the more likely. Um, we need more bots. They will sort themselves out eventually, but let's give them a hand, shall we? Actually, a few more than that, I think. Is that 50? That's 52. Yoink. Yoink. Fantastic. Okay. Now they're unloading a lot faster. So how much water do we have? 34k, and we're looking for 40k. Well, it shouldn't be too much longer. And... Bots are still going to be moving this stuff, which is going to say the ship's not ready. But it won't take long. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Alright, no more core fragments. Bots are still moving. Hurry up, bots. Why is this still here? 10 ammo. Oh, there it goes. No, they're bringing more batteries! Uh, I do wish we would stop getting double deliveries of these things. 
Oh well. It's not that big of a deal. Oh, apparently we already have... Yes, there it goes. Our ship is leaving. Iron hauler number nine is headed for Verpti. Cool, so we got a double test. Uh, once again, we know that it's going to pick up Holmanite core fragments. Larius, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Does the upper right train stop need updating? Only changed the left side one. Uh, no, that's a vanilla station that just has um, has a, tr a short train bring stuff back to the mall. Uh, as soon as something has greater than 50 items. Guess it's a different colour, so probably not. What's the purple train stop used for? Yes, that. Yeah. Um, return to mall. So we've got a short train uh, that goes mall returns and return to mall. And it's just waiting to bring back anything that we want to blacklist... Or, in this case, we've got a whitelist, I guess. We're, we're just doing... We're, we're reading from a robot network, uh, anything that's positive, and setting requests on this requester chest, and then we just go negative a million... F or, it doesn't have to be an arbitrarily large number. We could actually say... If there's more than 10 space elevator cables in this robot network, take the excess out of here. Um, but I'm just, like, whitelisting all this, um, for any amount. Uh, but yeah, negatives do not get thrown into set requests. And once we've got more than 50 of something here, the train will come and pick it up. Nice, hadn't registered that station before when looking at the blueprints, indeed. Um... Alright, so hauler number nine is actually waiting its turn to land. That's probably fine. That is probably fine. Frank Z, oh, I'm sorry. I could try muting all the time, but maybe I should have like a push to talk bind as well moments like this. Don't apologize, I love it. Okay then, same. All right. I guess the neighbor dog is one of the one of our mascots now. Uh, I do have my window very slightly open so I don't hook to death quite as quickly. They're in the background, it's fine. Okay, cool. Alright, uh, so now we just need more spaceships, which always, always means we need more barrel, um, which we are getting a lot of, um, but not quite enough. I mean, it will be enough, we're just playing catch up at the moment. Oops. Ruru, Bajiba, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Agree, they are in... Okay, cool. Uh, I want to just check where this train is going to go. I'm pretty sure all the barrel is getting dumped into uh, aeroframe poles. Or barrel sticks, as I like to call them. I can tell from this that in space we're saturated on aeroframe poles, so no stress there. Um, so we must be catching up. Ooh! Aeroframe scaffold is saturated? Since when? Uh, okay. Oh yeah, I forgot. We do have aeroframe scaffold over here. It's the actual barrel plate that we're waiting on. For a change. We're getting there. We are approaching saturation. How about... <gasps> Heavy bearings. Heavy bearings are saturated. What a beautiful sight. 
Heavy girders are saturated. Iridium has caught up. Oh, it's it's so beautiful. Well, okay, we don't have this thing full of iridium ingots, so we can't say it's completely saturated. Um, but yeah, we're getting there. What a beautiful feeling. So I think I'm still going to manually go and snatch a bunch of beryllium plate. Um, just so that we can get more spaceships faster, so that we can get more everything faster. Because I wouldn't really call it a downside of this system. But we do end up with like a couple of extra ships um, on each type of core fragment. And we may or may not be a little bit short on ships right now because of that. We might actually have plenty, now that I look at it. You know what? I should look at our outposts. So Verb T, we know, is bottlenecked on actually bringing core fragments up. Um, it's waiting for another station to have 4k core fragments. Um... Exorion is super slow. There's usually a ship waiting. Not right now, though. So no spaceship shortage there. We've also got Corsol. And uh, I think we've known for a while that we're not having any trouble with Imazite Cave. Or Fragments. Uh, then there's Stromhurst. We're very much caught up on... Erudite. Uh, let me just check back at home. Um, well, actually, it would have been faster to check this way. Uh, Erudite is sporadically being counted as saturated. As long as we see an Erudite core fragment uh, signal there. Well, that means it's not saturated, but we're dropping off Erudite at this moment. Uh, but yeah, presumably we're doing okay with Erudite. Pretty sure we are. Um, and what was the other thing I was going to check? Wax of this, uh, Spiritual. Spiritual is full of barrel. Oh, but aren't we saturated on barrel back at home now? No. Okay, I think we do need more ships. I think they're sort of, with the number of ships that we have, they're kind of going from oversaturating one resource to another a little bit. Looks like you need umbrellas at Corsol and the one next to Corsol. Yeah, I do. But we're going to have plenty of warning. Um... It's been a long time since we even had a CME that was aimed somewhere other than Nalvis that, you know, that we need to protect. Oh, uh, I didn't do a train for Fulminite yet. So let's do that. You know, I was going to grab a blueprint for it, but like, it's actually pretty easy to remember how it works. Still at 60 UPS as well. Hello, train. Alright. Um, we need... Oh, that was scary. Train. And... Train. And train. of the old fuel and you're going to go actually I think in the future I will um, 
copy the schedule, because I want them to all be about the same. The passing train scared me as well? Yeah. Like a bullet going past your head. What? How? How do I not have the recipe to copy? I deliberately avoided changing what I was doing there just for that. Here we go. Grab this train's recipe. Navsat. Shift right click. Drag this all the way up here. Don't change to and from radar or navsat or anything. Shift left click. Okay, cool. That worked. Uh, now we just need to change this thing to fulminite core fragment drop off. What is this? Oh, that's on another planet, I think. Fulminite core fragment drop off, making fulminite. I guess that's it. Empty cargo. Uh, and then Holmanite Core Fragment Pickup Full Cargo. That should be our schedule. Let's make sure. Uh, actually, don't go down the elevator yet. Should I say seizure warning for how fast these move, if we're like, normally zoomed in on them? Going through those square... rail blocks? When they do the zigzaggy thing, it's kind of... kind of rough. Down we go. Stop into the depot for just a second, or rather, until we're fully refueled. And then... Off to drop off Holmanite core fragments. I don't even really remember where they are. Do we need to update this build, I wonder? Nope. It's all the same recipe in the one block. Which I would definitely go out of my way to do more often. On another playthrough. Um, because... The ratios change when you change speed and prod modules. And I really don't like having to redesign later on. What am I doing? Decon old power poles. And put in the new ones. Fly around and make sure we've got all of those. Fantastic. Uh, and don't forget wide area beacons? Huh. Oh, this is the old erudite build. I think I've decommissioned it. No? Surprisingly? Well, here's the new one. Uniform block, and then uniform block. Anyway, we've got our beacons now, which apparently I dropped somewhere. I think they're in the spaceship. Maybe. There's a bunch of crap in here that probably shouldn't be. Or on verb T, perhaps? Um, there's definitely... White area beacons up here. Maybe I should take energy catalogs downstairs just so that I can make white area beacons at the mall downstairs. Energy catalog. It also goes into efficiency 5, but those don't benefit from prod modules. Can't make space rail downstairs. Uh, I guess there's compact beacons to make also. 
But if I recall correctly, those are surprisingly deep into the research tree. But that's it. It's literally just beacons would be the reason that I'd bring Catalog 1 down here. I think it's probably better to just bring the beacons. Myclat, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How goes Pi? Are you out of the Stone Age yet? Oh yeah, I wanted to test this, actually. Uh, let's do the Go Home button and watch. Avoided a 10 by reset. I go as well. Avoided a 10 by reset. What does that mean? Oh yeah, the reason I was check the thing I was checking there was does the terrain Nope, there's still the the nasty rocks here. Okay. Uh what was I here for? Beacons. I've only got twenty one. I should like allow tons of beacons to be made this way. If only so that uh, if I'm going to keep manually picking them up, we can just bring lots of them. Oh, wow. We can take space platform plating for granted now. Oh, that feels so nice. Hmm. Bask in the glory. Delicious. Give me some more tiny railgun ammo. Get back in there. Um, Alright, back downstairs, but I'm not going to use a spaceship. I kind of wish I had, like, a parachute or something. <laughs> Give me, like, a wingsuit with maybe rockets on it or something, so I can, like, glide down from space onto the planet. Let's borrow this. We're going to park ourselves here, or here actually, wait for passenger not present. Capsule lets you glide though. You need to waste some rocket fuel though, right? Land with that. I don't have one on me, and I don't want to have to take it back up. Man, I wish KSP2 was not the colossal disappointment that it is. I miss playing with space planes. What was I doing? Beacons. I did pick up the beacons, right? Yeah, let me pick up some more modules. We can take modules for granted. Uh, I guess we've been able to do that for a while. But... At scale, we really can take an awful lot for granted now that we couldn't before. Don't need that many efficiencies, do I? Whatever. What's going on over there? No. Oh, do these construction bots belong to this one? No. What are they doing? Is storage full? I think storage is full. What the actual... Uh, why do we have... 11,000 space train power packs charged? In this block? Excuse me? They're getting delivered still. What? Wait, what? What? They're just hanging out at the jukebox together? What the heck is this? I know I request it. Huh? Huh? Oh. I, I think I might know what happened here. Heck. Indeed. Um, I think, like... 
I think I was trying to like whitelist the space train power packs that I was charging here. But maybe I didn't realize they would get delivered. So now we have 11,000. Uh, why is a train out of fuel? And what? What? Uh, now we have 11,000 charged space train power packs with a stack size of 20. That's approximately 550 stacks or 11, almost 12 chests worth of charged power packs. <sighs> Toby, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Well, that'll sort itself out unless we run out of storage space in the mall, which is entirely possible. Um, I don't think we're going to run out of storage space in the mall. Should probably do something about all this random barrel and stuff, though. With all those batteries charging up? Good news, you don't need to make any batteries for a long time, yeah. The thing is, though, normally the batteries are delivered in an uncharged state, because they stack three times better that way. So, I don't really have a mechanism for these to get consumed. They'll get consumed by this train, and... The construction train when I use it. But that's about it. I can shut down building any more of them. But I want to keep it automated that we supply discharged power packs. It's not like I can manually discharge them either. Ah, it's fine. You know what, during this time of abundance, why don't we get ahead of some theoretical future where we're running out of space train power packs all of a sudden. Why not? Uh, but the one thing we're not abundant on just yet is barrel. Fantastic. Uh, barrel, barrel, barrel. I was gonna go steal some. So if we make... How much barrel does it take? It only takes two barrel to make one aeroframe scaffold, and that's ignoring the productivity bonus. Um, 0 0.5 times 1.32, accounting for productivity bonus, 0 0.66. Uh, and then divided by four, because we need four aeroframe bulkheads per uh, spaceship floor, is 0.17. Uh, one barrel plate makes 0.17 spaceship floor, as far as we're concerned right now. And we need like four or five hundred. 0 0.17, 0 0.17, 0 0.17. Times 418. Or rather, 418 divided by 0 0.17. Uh, we need a bit under 2,500 for one new spaceship. Which is to say about what we've got here. Actually less than that. So I think we can make a couple of spaceships. with the beryllium plate that we're going to get from this. I mean, with the aeroframe bulkheads. And I dare say we can get away with not spamming space elevator cable for just a moment. But I do want to keep it uh, high priority until it's saturated. Beautiful.
Absolutely beautiful. I wonder how long it'll take to fill this. Um, well, I don't think it is going to fill it with the amount that I brought. We brought like 5,000, right? Uh, 0.66. 3,300, uh, 66 stacks, so about two-thirds of a train, if I calculated that right. Which is going to take a little while to make, actually. I think we've, I assume we've got about zero up here, literally zero. Okay, cool. By cool, I mean the opposite of cool. Maybe I'll steal some barrel plate from here, because screw cargo rockets. We've actually only got like one or two outposts left that are actually using the cargo rockets. Uh, let's see. Gear bill? Uh, we need to update. We've done verb tea. We've done exorion. Uh, and we need to update Granus. So it's, yeah, it's just two outposts. Oh, and there's Muir, which already is using uh, this kind of system, but we need to update this prototype here um, to fit the... to fit in with the existing system. But we don't need to worry about that until we need to speed up copper, really. Or well, that could be another off-stream task. If I stop allowing trains to come up here to drop off the copper core fragments, this will empty and it'll be easier to deal with. Or I could just put them in, like, temporary containers. Either way. Halfway full. Let's grab some more. Make sure we get a train load. Not even gonna have to, like, force a premature delivery. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Close enough. And shift C. Fantastic. Alright, so what, five minutes or so? Ten minutes maybe? Until we can make another spaceship or two? Uh, what then in the meantime? How's uranium? I'm not seeing much of the coverage system at work. Uh, you know what? I've had enough. We're gonna redesign this. I will borrow what I've already got, because that output station is actually quite good. Uh, in fact, all of the output stations are good. Um, train stop names, yes. Alright, uh, I'll toss this just here for now. Wait, that's not going to be in the other space, is it? Let's just put it down the bottom like I've done before. Um, jump into the editor. Blank all of this. Can you temp speed up plate assemblers? While you have abundance of ingots? Uh, I might have already done that. Let me have a look soon. What am I doing? This thing. Okay. So I want 
probably what I've already got for uranium processing. I could make it take up a little less space by bringing these a tile closer. We do get like a squiggly belt for output if necessary. I don't know that we need this kind of volume of coverex. The more important thing is that uh, everything is prioritized and cycled in such a way that we don't end up with some kind of deadlock. Let's see. I was thinking of using some big containers for the cover X as well. Uh, we probably won't do that like so. That's really tacky and obviously thrown together when we could. This is actually probably fine. What's that outputting? Steel. Steel to make um, uranium fuel cells. Okay. Maybe put the uranium fuel cell production up here. We shouldn't need that many. Uranium. That's that's the wrong. That's the wrong machine. Okay. Uranium fuel cells. What's this? Smelting crafting. What? Oh. Oh, I totally forgot or didn't notice that um, that there's this other category of recipes in the advanced assembly machines. I need to reconsider some stuff. I don't think we would want to turn iron ore directly into gears, because we'd probably lose out productivity-wise. So, like, two iron ore becomes one gear. We get a productivity bonus of whatever it is, like 32% just once, right? As opposed to... Uh, it might be a bit different in Crestorio. Um, in fact, I'm sure it is. I remember now. It is a bit different in Crestorio. Where are my furnaces? Yes, we're chasing squirrels. Those should be the same. Okay. So, 15 plate from 20 iron ore. If we're not using the enriched stuff, we'll just ignore that for the moment. And we can get prod bonuses in these ones. So, with five... Uh, what's 1.32, is it? No, no, no. 1.4 times 15. 21. So, 20 iron ore becomes 21 iron plate. Slightly better than 1 to 1. And then we turn iron plate into gears, right? Where's the gears? One iron plate, up, one iron gear wheel. So th this process right here, without even using enriched, uh, would give us more. More for our iron. Than if we use this recipe. Um, two copper cable from one enriched copper, two iron stick from two iron ore. That's terrible, actually. Uh, two iron stick from one enriched. These all seem bad. Uh, presumably we can pay rare metals to save imosite powder. That would have been good a while ago, but now we're totally drenched in imosite powder. Um, T 
Ten iron plate, one coke makes five steel. I don't feel like doing the math on that right now. Oh, oh, electronic components. Now that might be worth paying attention to. So... There's... Four electronic components from two plastic, two glass, two silicon. Uh, the same recipe, but we get ten from three, but with three lithium, which is... I'm pretty sure we've been over it and it's better. Um, or... We can just turn stone and plastic into electronic components. Five plastic... We, we've got, like, infinite plastic. So we've got infinite oil on this planet. Um, and twelve stone. Which, we're not having trouble with stone anymore. Also, glass and silicon traces back to stone. There's more production steps through here, so we're probably doing better with the productivity bonuses, maybe? Something to consider, though. This is certainly a lot easier. We'll do the math on that at some point. Anyway, let's stop getting quite so sidetracked and get back into the other thing that we were sidetracked into. Um, I was going to do uranium fuel cells. If I can find them. So we could probably do some direct insertion here. How fast is this? Very slow doesn't need to be all that fast. We could probably do two of these. And then some long arms. Um, but we also need access to uranium-238. And 235 for that matter. But yeah, maybe we could just not have a belt for the steel. Or for the fuel cells. Um, so I want to maybe base Coverex around a big container. Maybe. Oh, doesn't Coverex output... No, it's this one that outputs iron and stone, right? Coverex just does uranium stuff. Nope, Coverex also does stone. Koha, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure... There's no way to do Coverex with more productivity modules, right? Coverex Enrichment Radiation Facility doesn't take prods. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Now... We take in 238 and 235. We output 235 and stone. Uh, we could just do... We could do like a swap chest. That is not... Vanilla Coverex? No, it is not. For the fancy circuit version, uh, where we count the input so that we don't over-input, so that we get a faster acceleration with multiple machines, um, it's actually very handy that it outputs stone, because you can just use stone to reset the counter. But I'm not going to use that this time. Um, we could do swappy swap. Let's see. What are our goals here? We want 235 and 238 to go into Coverex first and foremost. 
Maybe I should use a bot system for this. Um, if we had bots to load up the uranium when the train comes, that'd be a bit slower. But it would allow us to draw from the uranium uh, that's being offered to the rail network. Instead of it being, like, dead to cover X once it goes here. Just a thought. I, I kind of like this, actually, going into the delivery cannon chest as a sort of splitter, but we can take from it again. So this goes to LTN, this does not, um, at least not directly, and we can still take from that. That still kind of super prioritizes LTN, though. Which is... Mm, it depends. Let's get rid of this. That's going to confuse me. Alright, let's ignore, like, the context of this one and just design this out in the open. So... If we have... these in a row. That actually works really well. We could have 235 and 238 input from here. Where's my cheat input? Two thirty-five, two thirty-eight. We're not going to be putting back onto that belt. Doesn't matter which side they're on. Um, we need to filter out stone. We could either move this back a tile and use long arms for input. Which is fine, because individually these are going to be slow, no matter what kind of beacon they're under. And that's a better solution, just because it works with lower tech. And then we can output the stone like this. Um, it was here, right? It doesn't have to go that way. Anything that goes back into this box will get sorted. So we can just do the stone output down the bottom. Which I guess means we could output the stone this way. Yeah, just output anything but 238 this way. Blacklist, uranium, 238. Um, and then take whatever we want from here. Um, and we could say constant combinator, filter inserter, set filters, uh, set filters whitelist, and negative Negative however much uranium. Well, if we just do one row of these machines, it's easier to make them behave. Because we're not trying to count for two of these. And they're not, like, stealing from each other. So, how much goes into the recipe? 30. So, uranium, 235, negative 30... The first 30 uranium-235 in this container will get ignored by this inserter. It'll always take stone. Um, and then this thing will always have enough to repeat its recipe, 235-wise anyway. Seems good. And we can output the stone down this way, eventually. Uh, 
nice and simple. Um, which way do I want to do this? Okay, so let's say... How much can I fit here? That looks a little gaudy. Maybe I should just make this hold 60. Yeah, let's do that. Close enough. Okay. So I think this will still be more than enough coverage. Like, a lot more than enough coverage. Quite likely. We're going to take Uranium-238. This is 235, this is 238, okay. This is 235. Um, how about... Well, that's a little inconvenient. Not really. Well, actually, yes. Up here, maybe? That's looking a bit better. How about we start over here? 235 on the left, 238 on the right. Uh, anything that's not ready to be taken by the train can get cycled back. Except I kind of want an initial stockpile to never go to the trains, basically. Let's do a little zigzaggy belt, since we know we don't need high throughput. What's our max rate? 2.2 uranium-238 per second? Yeah, I think we'll be fine. Okay. This might actually be a job for inserters instead of the delivery cannon chests here. Because... Because I want to have a, a backlog stored here that prioritizes going into here. On the other hand... What if I made it so that we could take the entire amount that's available to the train network? Worst case, we get a train here waiting for some resources sometimes. That might actually be okay. I'd like to experiment with it. Hmm. I could make this container a little bigger just to make it neater. Also gives us more storage. Uh, I think I have a better idea now that I look at it that way. Okay, this one is stone. And this one's iron, right? Why don't we just... U-235, only if U-235 in here is greater than X. Simple. Say... 500? Yep, 
forget about this thing. Uh, all right. U-235, greater than 500, enable, disable, fantastic. And then maybe something similar for U-235. For when it goes to the train. And we probably won't use this. So once it does go to the train, it goes to the train. Uh, 235 and 238. Over here, please. Thank you for the follow, Kid Binario. That's kind of a cool name. Alright, so high priority, it goes to Coverex. Uh, and we could probably... How many stacks do we have here? 256. We don't really want to keep any stone or iron in there. Um, we could stay like, let's say like 100 stacks of... Uranium-238 can stay in here before it goes to the train. To make absolutely sure we can turn it into 235. And then... We get both on this belt for input. We output 238 here, uh, here all the time. We output stone here all the time. We keep 60 U-235 in each of these chests. So that CoverX should always be able to start again. Um, and then... Splitter. Everything goes back into this container. Where it gets filtered. Oh, that doesn't quite reach as far as I thought it would. That's fine. Maybe move this down a tile. Okay. And then we need 235 and 238 to come up here as well. Um, I could just split it this way. No, I kind of want it to be lower priority than CoverX, which we could accomplish by simply taking from the belt at the end. But we've made it so that the belt stops here. So it's not the neatest way to do things. But we could still maybe do it that way. Yeah, actually I might be fine with this aesthetically. Oops. Alright. Let's give it a test. We need a bunch of... Uranium and nothing else. This will be the same. This will be the same. Except, what was that belt for? Just the uranium fuel cells. 
I don't care if this fills up with uranium fuel cells instead of steel. The steel is only for uranium fuel cells. That'll be fine. Uh, we could probably... What else could I use to piggyback these wires over here? I don't think if I move this chest one tile over, it's likely to reach... No. I could use a combinator to piggyback the green wire across, but we need the logistic train stop to reach over here. What if I move this over? Can that wire reach directly? Really? It's one tile off. Uh, one, two, three, four. This is the biggest chest we've got as well. Do you plan to share the plan book of your city block? Uh, yeah, you can get it already. Um, just yesterday I updated the K2SE blueprint book on the Discord. Thanks, Glacier Wolf. Um, so yeah, constant combinator, we could do this. But... I don't have anything to, like, organically piggyback the wire signal across here. Sadly. Uh, fine, we'll use one of these. Add on power pole. Yucky. And connect this like so. Can I pick a dolly? Is it? Yeah, I can. Alright, that's fine. That should go here, though. What are we bonking for? Victor, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I don't see any 235... Oh, right. We need the random 235 to get started. Which should all go into this one naturally, unless we get the rare double 235 input. I could actually add a little bit of circuitry here to make sure that doesn't happen. I think. Read belt contents hold. Enable, disable, 235 equals 4. Are you playing Space Exploration and Crestorio 2? Yes, indeed. Title says it. Indeed. I love that emote. A bonk a day keeps the T-hacks in check? Why do I need to be in check? Why is there uranium ore in... Oh. I saw that coming, but I forgot. It's fine. Whitelist, uranium ore. Delete. Oh, is this backward? Yeah, there we go. Get out of here, uranium ore. Okay, so let's simulate speeding this up just a little bit. Cool, that works. So the first machine will get all of the 235 um, until this bit is saturated. And I'm realizing... A, that I forgot these, and B, that these are, like, backward. Uh, 
Um, and see that I didn't control the outputs. For the 235, which will cycle back here, which will make its way back here. That's fine. Um, Alright, so like this. Not quite like that. We need to get some more 235 so that we can test this out. How about instead of prod modules, I put some super speed modules in? Just between the two of us. Actually, I'll shove them into the beacon. That'll be easier. Meow. Uh, because the recipe outputs everything at the same time, maybe we should have stackies for this. Probably don't need super stacks. Oh, and these should probably have a stack size of one. Are you not doing your thing anymore? Where did the... Huh? Where did the output from this go? Oh, this one stole it. Right, I forgot. I'm okay with that. We don't have to, like, super duper optimize it for getting started. Is okay. Good to see you again. Well, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right. So that is CoverX accelerating. Um, and presumably, once we get past, well, actually, these are gonna have to be totally saturated. T hex just wasn't satisfied. Could we assume that uranium broke again? Actually, it's fine, but I just want to improve and make sure that it's not going to break again. Uh, let's go for some steel in here. As the train would bring. Okay, so that's obviously starting to work. Wait, didn't I just put... Oh, it took it all already. Once this hits 60, it should output 235 back to the system, which will loop back here. 57, 60, or oh, 61, I guess. 62. Oh, I see the problem. There we go. Yeah. So it is outputting excess uh, 235 back this way. Well, considering that we're not controlling the inputs, these things will over... What is this one not working for? There's no 235 up here. Okay, yeah, that was a bad decision. Uh, let's just not do this bit of belt control. And I guess we'll just have to deal with the occasional 235 not saturating in the most efficient way. A 
Otherwise, I would need separate belts. There's room for a second belt? Yeah, I could do that, but I don't want to. Alright, so that seems to work. And we're not going to output these until we've got 10 or 100 stacks of each to make absolutely sure that we can reproduce both, or rather reproduce 235. Yeah, that should be okay. I think that's our new build. Alright. Let's try doing that. And... Much as I hate to interrupt the Coverex magic... We'll send our decon train over yonder. Uh, I might just keep the decon train parked here for a minute. Wait until empty. I'll leave the beacon where it is. Get rid of all the belts we're not going to be using. That needs to turn this way. Get rid of all this mess. Get rid of all the old cover X, as much as I hate to interrupt one of the recipes. Uh, and I was going to just copy-paste it. Can I do that? Let's do it from here. Seems like it should be okay. And then get rid of this. Get rid of this. Is that in the right spot? Yeah, it is. Bring... Uh-oh. What train do we have approaching? Steel times two. That's probably... Fine. Probably. Alright, construction train, do your thing. Actually, you can park up here. And I might need to get hands on with this one. I should grab some shields so that I can just tank the uranium damage. Do I not have them here? I do. I'll just put on my power armor. Power armor. Still have the power of flight. We need a... We need a 2x2 two two container. Do we not have that in the construction train? We do. Why aren't they building? Oh, I see. Yeah, the bots prioritize deconstruction over construction. So they got themselves full first instead. Good job, bots. 10 out of 10. I think that'll be enough storage. Da 
that's a true bottleneck? Oh no. Uh, hello, I'd like to report a crime. So kind to the bots? Am I? Is that a joke? Oh, I don't have a RoboBot on right now. Should I fix that? Probably. What did I have here? Whatever, let's just do more jetpack. And this and this and this. Oh my god. Oh my lord. Um, you know what? Let's use even distro. And dump everything over there. Fantastic. Beautiful. Should have just put it over there to begin with. Now then. I'm not taking health damage, but it is preventing me from flying. Spoke too soon because I got rid of it. All right. De Dej? What? Had to do the obligatory bad pun. Did you though? Did we really? Construction train is still slacking. Because it's still trying to do the decon job. Because these chests actually have a ton of 238. As it turns out. But it's full? No, it's not. What the hell? Why didn't even distro move this over here? Is it because this is marked for deconstruction? I don't think so. I I guess it was. Alright, the bots can stop panicking now. Um, for the most part. Is this full? Yeah, it's pretty full. This is why I've been procrastinating updating this build. The design isn't that difficult. It's easier to design a coverex that's good enough when... Good enough for when you've got practically infinite 235. As opposed to when it's accelerating. Finally, we're building some stuff. It only took 10 minutes. Speaking of 10 minutes, we should have uh, the ability to make a spaceship or two. We do. Oops. One more ion hauler, please. I should probably put a buffer chest or something with spaceship floor down here. 
just so the bots can build it that much more quickly. Any more up this way? I think that's it. I think that is it. Oh, is this completely full of 238? Ruh-roh. How about we unlimit this for the moment? Don't forget to turn on the ship reactor. I won't. I would never, not even once. Looks like we got all of that built in one go, and we've got the stuff on the memory cell. Fantastic. Ship reactor. Get started. And I'll actually give it a minute to warm up. Since uh, not giving it a minute to warm up might have been the reason that uh, one of our ships took some damage. Possibly. Do I really not have any add-on power poles handy? I guess I never added them to the construction train. I don't like to need to use them. Alright, let's just go grab some... Well, literally one from here. And robots go. And we should be able to let the train back in now. I actually had a theory about the reactor. Is it possible to check the integrity check to make sure it's a spaceship? to then trigger a pulse to fuel the reactor. Um, we can't check that the ship has got integrity, no, I'm pretty sure. What I did here was just set a timer of like 30 seconds after we received the S signal um, that we can reasonably guess that all of the combinators should be in place. Bonk indeed. Good try, Bidrithdo. Steel train filled with fuel cells? Nani? What? Steel equals zero. What? Why is our LTN train not giving us a steel... Signal. Um, hmm. Is there a local RoboPort? If so, check for active bots equals zero. Um, if there's items missing, that won't do the job. Oh, wow, this is already going kind of fast. That's good. Das ist sehr gut. Let me just empty this for the moment. And... I guess, yeah, we do have... Why do I keep thinking uranium stacks to 50? Does it stack to 50 in vanilla? Probably not. Alright, so we're going to keep a thousand uh, in this container for 235. That way we should be able to saturate cover eggs. Uh, 
Um, I wonder if it has... I I'm pretty sure we didn't change the logic on this, right? I wonder if it has something to do with... This didn't get read as an LTN train? No, don't... don't do that. Alright. You may go. Oh. Yeah, I put it on manual or something. No, that was after the problems. Okay, signal. There's no steel on this. Wouldn't it usually have a signal of, like... If it was a fluid, it'd say negative one steel if it was trying to empty itself of steel. But it doesn't do that for solids. But I had this working before, so how the hell did I do it? I don't know. I could say... Well, I'm, I'm going to start needing combinators if I do this. Okay, so here's, here's the thing. LTN trains are only short trains coming here. Long train is going to be a vanilla scheduled train, so this doesn't need a condition. Um, there's two types of LTN trains that come here. Steel drop-off and uranium fuel cell pickup. If we have uranium fuel cell pickup signal, then we're not dropping off steel. So... So that should be it. Uranium fuel cell... not equal to zero? Is it that easy? We can certainly hope. Um, could you be faster? There we go. There we go. I don't know why we've got this much steel here. 17,000. Must have... Must have been not... Oh, uh, it's because the, uh... Add-on power pole wasn't built. It wasn't reporting what we've got to LTN. Okay. This is the last train. So once we've got um, 50 stacks of uranium fuel cells here, did we pick them up this way? I don't think so. Uh, yeah, we need 50 stacks of uranium fuel cells real quick. 2,500. 18, 19,000 seconds, 31, 32 minutes. But that is a large amount of time. I could go steal some and bring them back. Just to test this. My inventory is a bit full though. I could shove a bunch of this stuff into the decom train. Why am I still carrying these space belts? And superior loaders, for that matter. Okay. I'm gonna go steal a bunch of uranium fuel cells. We're not gonna be able to fly back, I think. Where's the drop-off for them? Here it is. It's quite close. Uh, and surprisingly, this is not reporting a problem. Cool. Oh, it's picking them up from the mall. I didn't see that coming. Uh, it's only 2,000. Okay, let's pray we don't get hit by a train. You can do the navsat hack to fly. Uh, I forgot about that one. It's a short trip, and he... Okay. 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 I'm scared. Too spooky for me. Alright. 
we are here. Now then, uranium fuel cells, get in there, might trigger a delivery, but maybe this is now satur uh, satisfied actually. What are we looking for? 6k, we've got 2.5 plus 2.4 with a stack threshold of 2500. So yeah. Um, let's just momentarily crank up the request on this thing, I guess. 16,000. There we go. And change it back before I forget. Now then, train arrives, we get uranium fuel cell signal. And then I need to remove steel to see if that works. Alright then. These are kind of fast. That's good. 235 is getting to the end of the belt. That's good as well. Um, yeah, this whole new system seems to be fairly decent, actually. Two thirty-five cycles back and comes back this way. These are all satisfied. So how fast is our cover X? Uh, 0.8661U235 per second. This can consume two. But we're not going to need it to keep that up indefinitely. Alright, seems good. Maybe I should have made the cover X bigger. Whatever, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, that's pretty neat. You can go back now. And you can go back now. Uh, and I forgot I wanted to steal some steel. We'll get yet another delivery of steel coming in. Just to confirm this works. On second thought, I'll just take it back to the mall. It's fine. Alright, we're down to 1.6k steel. Here comes the rest. Reasonably swiftly. Does that train have all the upgrades? Oh, it's the short train. But yes, yes it does. I would have thought it would be faster. Oh, UPS is still 60. I guess it just doesn't have as much room to accelerate. Yeah, it does still take time to reach max speed. Alright. And it's working. And bloody-tastic. Alright. May as well shove this back in here. And I'll take the rest back to the mall. That's slower than I thought it would be. And that's our new cover X. Let's give it a save. And let me grab some water.
Okay. Bungee bum, if I didn't say hello today already, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, spaceship time. And autosave time, apparently. Uh, spaceship, we got heat, fantastic. That's perfect, actually, that it goes to 462.5 degrees. Um, off of one uranium fuel cell. Alright, what are we up to? Iron hauler 10, this will be 11. Iron hauler 1-1. One, one. And we're going to launch with destination... Hagen Orbit in mind, and it should land at number 14, which is, I think it's Barrel, yeah, it should land at Barrel drop-off as soon as it can, which, um, no? Wait, why is its destination Hagen? No, 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 no. No, Hagen Orbit. There we go. How much more floor do we have up here? More than enough? Now things are starting to accelerate. Once more. So this will be number 12. We'll probably stop before 20 for the iron haulers. And we're not going to need as many ships with the bigger ones. Did you end up deleting that mod? I keep forgetting. Alright, we're about to pulse that onto the memory cell. And... go. Fantastic. We've got water. We've got uranium cooking. We've got fuel. Um, we could probably go ahead and send it somewhere right now. Yeah, sure enough, destination changes to Hagen. I don't know why. I definitely made sure it was Hagen Orbit a second ago. Uh, but once the accumulators reach a certain amount, it should automatically... It should get a speed signal over here. Target speed is 110 already. No, it should be trying to... Why is it not trying to anchor? It probably is trying to anchor. This is probably full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the ship ready for launch? It is. We have... an idle ship. Waiting for orders. Waiting for an outpost to request a ship, apparently. Yeah, there's nothing here. We just did the spaceship equivalent of getting enough trains for LTN. And now they're sitting idle in... Uh, what's effectively the depot. The depot is also the drop-off, um, but they couldn't sit idle here if... Like, once we drain enough barrel from here... Oof. Maybe I should prioritize the train station on the left. Once we drain enough barrel from here, one of the outposts that delivers barrel can request a ship. 
I got the same bug in my game when launching new ships. Sending it to orbit, but ship goes to Nalvis every time. Huh. That is weird. But yeah, so let's just check our four fragments. Uh, they are indeed all saturated, or close enough to saturated. It looks like we should be launching a ship to pick up Iridite. Like now-ish? Let's check. I could look at any um, outpost, but we'll have a look at the Iridite one. It's probably already got two ships on its way, that's why. No? Oh, hold on. Okay, so Feral, Hormonite, and Purple Stuff are saturated. Iridite is not, so this one should be reporting every time it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time it's this thing's turn. Back at central... Not putting it on the memory cell. Probably because we've got... Ooh. That's... Not good. Uh, our counter might be a little bit incorrect. So the Iridite is number one. We apparently have two ships on the way to pick up from number one already. Which is probably this one. Yes. And... Maybe there's one picking up from it right now. No. There should be two ships on their way to Stromhurst orbit at this moment. Stromhurst orbit. Stromhurst orbit. Okay, that's correct. AAI channels set up correctly? I believe so. Uh, so verb T was number four. Central dispatch. Uh, so this subtracts. We've been subtracting. I think we probably haven't been adding or something for signal number four. So it's either here... No, it's not here. Um... Oh, you're joking. This is why. Okay, are there any ships that are on their way to Verb T right now? Or picking up from it. I don't think so. Okay. So we've got... Negative 148k. One And then... 160. That should zero it. And we'll just double check again. We do not have a ship on its way to Verb T. Cool, cool, cool. That should be correct now. Just a little wire? Yep, that's all it takes. Um, I don't think that would have stopped any ships from being scheduled to go to Verb T, though. I think the reason we're not sending ships to Verb T is because this is saturated. I really need to do something about how the trains take from these two sides so imbalanced, since we're just reading from this side, though. Hmm. Uh, I could read from all of these and say core fragments have to be less than X at the outposts. That's probably better, to be honest. Much more reliable. I'm 
we'll do the same thing here. Two more. I won't be copy pasting because it'll change the request. And this one. Oops. Okay, so we've got 23 times uh, 96 times 20. A bit over 44,000 if it's full. Our spaceships carry 18k. How about we just subtract one ship, one small ship? So like 26,000? So at each outpost we're going to say if core fragment of that type is less than 26,000 then we can request a ship. And we've got like five outposts to update like this. Those are the only two we've done in system so far. There are two in Kalmea. Stromhurst. And last, but certainly not least, down in Wexavis, our main source of barrel for now. Spiriso Orbit. Alright, so this means on the central clock channel where we're smuggling this in, uh, if we detect less than 26k barrel core fragments back at base in the blue chests, then we're allowed to request a ship to come pick this stuff up. Oh. That might reduce the number of ships we end up hovering in orbit as well. Although I don't see any here at the moment. We know we've got 12 ships, and I'm pretty sure the count is correct. Uh, apparently we have... Uh, 10 ships on the way to outpost number 3. That's a little bit bursty. Two on the way to outpost 1, and one on the way to outpost 2. Which one was outpost 3 again? Uh, this was 4, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Hexavis. That uh, Wexavis. Spiriso. Phonestra, Phonestra... Phone Estra, phone Estra. Oh, this is coming back. But, yeah, I think we're suddenly doing a run on barrel. Um. The, the whole point of counting the spaceships was to prevent this sort of thing. Oh well, as long as we don't bottleneck on the spaceships and we get every resource... Um, and we don't need, like, 700 ships to do it, it's, it's fine, honestly. Okie dokie. One sec.
Why are those belts empty? They're not empty. They're, they're fine. Why are we short on... Oh, I remember shoving this in here earlier. What? Womp womp. Whoops, indeed. So, 238 unconditionally fills this belt. And only when we've got lots of it, like 50 stacks, do we let it flow to here. Hmm. full. The uranium ore belt got some on the bottom right. Got some? What do you mean? I don't think it can drop onto belts that it's not supposed to. train. I should just fly. Oh, I can't. I forgot. Get in there. Can I shift C it into here? Oh, I can. Oh, that's better. That's easier. But then it's not the best test of this thing. It's definitely on the belt. Which belt is it on? Oh, this? Hmm. Indeed. Oh no, there's even more. Okay. Okay. Nope, there's more. <laughs> Wait, there's more. My bots are tired as well. We're almost there. Is that it? Are we good now? Okay. So that'll be full in a moment. There's still a ton of 238 in here. Uh, it only goes to the train if there's still quite a lot left in here. Let's make it 10,000, in fact. And... So this is unconditional. It feeds Kovarex. It feeds this thing. It only goes here when that's really full. Should be fine, right? Right? Good morning, what's the plan for today? Not steel mage, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Uh, the plan is... Keep expanding and fixing stuff. Uh, we've actually just got to the point where we seem to have enough spaceships to keep all of our different core fragments that we're getting with this logistic spaceship system uh, saturated. So that's nice. We've actually built 12 such spaceships. I don't know that we really need that many. At least not yet. 
but it's certainly a lot more efficient than what I did last playthrough, where for one thing I didn't exploit Foenestra this way, um, but for another thing you just had to kind of estimate how many spaceships you needed for each outpost to keep up, um, and you ended up with like a hundred spaceships or something. Alright, so what are we doing now that we've got all of these resources saturated? Oh, look at that. Look at that. Space elevator cable. All the way to the back of the belt. Again. What a beautiful sight. Absolutely glorious. Now, maybe we'll actually see Beryl get here naturally soon. Still got a ways to go on aeroframe poles, I guess. Okay. Um, research? I did start on Bio 1. I accidentally put a Material 3 build up here. Um, we've actually got everything we need for Material 3... I just need to do the catalog thing for it. Let's go do that. Why not? Simple thing to do while we think of what comes next. So Cryonite... Oh, uh, I definitely know what I want to do in the near future, um, though maybe I won't do it on stream. Just like I've done with the other... with two of our four previous outposts, um, I'm gonna decon all of this this crap and we're gonna update it to be a modern outpost with just space elevator um spaceship pickup and nothing else uh but yeah we've basically got infinite crinite vulcanite barrel iridium uh imasite cave fragments regular core fragments of course although come to think of it i haven't tapped nalvis at all yet um, I mean, not really, not with the new system. So we could do Nalvis as well. That'll give us a decent amount of regular resources. Not that we're not already getting them, just as a side product of the other core fragments. Um, there's also a single oil core fragment planet or moon in the system. Um, we could tap that just in case we run out of crude oil on Hagen. It, it could happen. Uh, but more to the point, once we do that, we could just let it run indefinitely and not worry about such things. Um, but yeah, let's continue with science. Have you started your Vita planet yet? I have not. We do have a Vita planet in system. Um, which one was it? It's one of the more inner ones. I think it's Moss Garden, appropriately enough, since Vita Melange looks kind of like Moss. Uh, it is 2.5k radius, not many biters, biter medias, of course. Not too much trouble, honestly. I think I want to work towards... Oh, crap. Uh... Don't we just need... Whoops. Energy theme. Don't we just need material 3? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're actually on the verge of getting energy beaming. Let's do that. Whoops. So, we are going to copy-paste edit... Um, why don't I make the blueprint properly, actually? Much now bitter. Let's put in... 
Uh, where is it? Material catalog one and two. And I won't forget to add this. And this is a riveting job of just changing the recipes. And changing the inputs. Uh, friction data, ballistic. Friction data, ballistic data. Uh, radiation shielding and explosion shielding data. Change these symbols to those. Maybe I should have made... No, we need different colored different colored, different temperature thermofluid as well, but I was going to say maybe I should have made some kind of like universal sushi thing to do catalogs. Or some kind of bot system. Well, too late now. Alright, so it is negative 273 thermofluid. And that's it. Update the station name. One and a two and a three and four and five. And we're making catalog three. Fantastic. I also need to update catalog four. Or, otherwise the train's going to deliver the wrong stuff here. So this will be catalog 3 plus 25 degree thermofluid. I'm pretty sure it only comes out as 25. Yes, indeed. Uh, and this will be catalog 4. And then, just like we did before... Electrical shielding, red shielding, blue shielding, and whatever this is. Experimental alloys. I'll just double check. Uh, yes, those are indeed the inputs. And update the... Wait, don't even put a thermofluid request on this side. We're not making that mistake today. Uh, and then the data cards need to be these four. I see chat moving. I'll look in a second. And last but not least... Uh, one, and two, and a three, and a four. Stephanie the Kitten, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. That means build solar at the sun once energy beaming is completed, indeed. Have you started? No, no, no. Just got my first rocket done, nice. Do I play K2 or SE? Want to start a new base? Oh, and do you maybe have a handy guide to learn circuit networks on hand? Uh, I don't have the the tutorial that I've thought about making, uh, but this is a good place to learn them. There's a lot of resources on my Discord as well. Uh, but yeah. Uh... Maybe someday. Proper tutorial. Is this done? I think it is. Blueprint time. 
So this is catalog three and four for material. Uh, tiles, entities, modules, train stop names. Fantastic. Snap to grid, 86, 25, and 1. Check that it lines up. Seems good. And put it next to... the other material stuff. Okay, so now we're going to put this here. Probably could have just pasted this one here to get the scaffolding done at least while we were doing all that. Live and learn. Let's grab our scaffolding train. And then our construction train. Check that it's got the research servers. It should do. They stack really well, so I just don't bother removing them. I stand corrected. Oh, it's trying to load something we don't have. Oh no. How are we still stuck? Has Holmium just not caught up? Uh, we've definitely got, like... Basically, infinite Holmium. It might be time to make a new build. Process Holmium. This one's missing Holmium for input. Holmanite. Where's our Holmanite processing? Here it is. It's probably just playing catch up. How much do we get out of this? 48 Holmanite core fragments per second become 50 Holmanite. What do we have here? Uh, where is it? We have 13 times 2.55. 33.2 Holmium core fragments per second. So we're not bottlenecking on processing. Or at least not at the point of core fragments. Uh, 50 Holmanite per second, I think it was. 50.6. This times 3. Sixteen becomes forty-eight. Um, yeah, no, that's pretty good at the moment. Meowgamin, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Words like and basically are the most often during your stream. So I guess now. Uh, let's get our blueprint again. And the reason we got distracted from that is we don't have Holmium cable here. Do I have some I can just grab? Yeah, I think so. Or at least it should last at least 10 seconds. In the mall. Hopefully it can finish crafting whatever it's trying to craft in the auto crafter and not get stuck with the rest. I should check on the stats for how we've been producing Holmium Cable. We went from really easily saturating it to suddenly there's never any to probably easily saturating it again now. Uh-oh. Maybe I need to... Oh, I did crank the priority on this. Okay. Holmium plate and holmium cable. Cable's very spiky, kind of as expected. 
Chromium plate is... Well, it's improved. It's averaging about 286 a minute. That is way short of keeping this thing going full speed, not that it needs to. Um, maybe it's already time to go back to VerbT and make more core mining drills. I don't know, 33 and a quarter core fragments per second should be... Should be a good start. Should be decent for where we're up, we're up to. This is actually saturated. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I think we're going to find the Holmium core fragments are saturated. We probably need to increase our processing. Didn't I just do the math and say that we can deal with, like, 48 per second? So we need another train. At least one more train, I think. To take... Holmium core fragments downstairs. Should have done it this way to start with. Where is that gonna go? There it is. What? Holmium core fragment. Space train. Hello. Okay. Should have removed this. Or not placed it that way. Now then. I'm set. What the heck is that? I'm just kidding. I know what it is. It's from yesterday. Uh, and then we need to give it some... Solar panels and additional advanced additional electric engines. So it'll go faster and use less fuel. Fantastic. Away we go. Uh, let me just check as well. Is this already saturated? It is not. Okay. Although it looks like the train is about to deliver to this side anyway. I haven't put a limiter... Uh, okay, we need to fix that as well. I haven't actually put a train limit so that the vanilla scheduled trains would de deliver to both sides. So we've only been processing Holmium core fragments at half speed. That's rude. Oh, good timing. So now we get these ones started as well. Alright, so same deal as we did with the other stations. That's the old one. Here's a good example. Huh? How do I not have combinators? Where did I put my combinators? That is like the last thing that I would usually drop. Alright, construction train. Do a drive-by if you please. 
Do you plan to play Pi later? Uh, no one's threatened me into it yet, so maybe not. We'll see. You dumped them in the decon train. Yeah, that sounds about right. Alright, we're gonna do set train limit. Call me in core fragment. And we're gonna go to 10k on each side. So now train limit on this side is zero. And it's probably just as well because our train is um, not quite empty. There we go. Okay, that'll probably help a little bit with the Holmanite situation. Hmm. Oh yeah, I probably didn't have room for the usual... Yeah, for the usual signaling here, so it just left this way. Fair enough. Maybe I should have... Because the pickups are so quick... Uh, maybe I shouldn't have these signals here and allow the trains to leave by moving forward. Well, it's a bit late for that now. Something to consider for next time. Here we find ourselves in a depot. Now then. Uh, it'll take a minute to catch up, but hopefully we'll see an increase in Holmium ingot production. It's definitely going to take a little while. Because it has to go through all these steps. Now then. I like how we've got, like... Well, apart from the uh, beads, we've got like one, two, three-ish steps in this block. But we ended up doing it three times anyway, so it probably would have been cleaner just to have separate blocks for each step. Uh, the only thing to consider, though, to maybe not use trains is when the stack size for something is incredibly small. If the trend continues, the next bottleneck would be Vulcanite. We will never, ever be short on Vulcanite. That's impossible. It could never happen. Not before the heat death of the universe. Unless it actually happens, in which case I never said that. Alright, should I force some Holmium plate over here? I think I probably should. How much does it need? Uh, two for two, not counting productivity bonuses. So one makes one point something. One point three two cables. Um, it stacks lower as well, so one stack makes like 1.3-ish stacks of cable. Oh wait, no, uh, double that. Dab. Okie dokie. Uh, I might steal some Holmium Cable... Wait, were we okay in the mall now? This is where our Holmium Cable is going. Probably. Yeah, we weren't trying to spend Holmium Accumulators before. Probably mostly because of heavy girders. Why do we have no multi-cylinder engines? 
Probably because we're not bringing them by train. And I might have accidentally removed them. There's nothing in space for multi-cylinder engines. It's only for making locomotives, right? I think. You know what? I could just deliver locomotives here in ridiculous numbers instead of manufacturing them on the spot. Do you have Holmium core fragments in LTN still? If yes, you didn't limit the requester stations by connecting them to LTN, I'm pretty sure. Limit the requester stations. Uh, well, that would only be... That would only be going through the core fragments that we've got left from the outpost that we've just updated to not use the cargo rocket anymore. So this right here is literally the last of it. Upgrade Holmium cable build to wide area beacon? Uh, I could, but it'd just be a waste of 10 megawatt because we're very, very, very bottlenecked on the actual resources for now. Okay, now where were we? Where indeed? Oh yeah, the train wasn't getting loaded. That's what led us back here. Um, this is getting annoying. Alright, we'll take some Holmium cable. We'll wonder why space assembly machines aren't getting made. Um, is this... It's like half full. You know what? Sure. Let's just take this up. Much now a bit. Check on space elevator cables because why not? Still totally saturated. Plenty of holmium cables here. Fantastic. Alright, up the elevator we go. And I think I'll just add a stop to make it deliver straight to the mall. I don't think this will work. Nope. Okay. Uh, please drop off... Holmium core fragments here, wait till empty, and go back to the mall, uh, the depot after that. Actually, don't go to the depot up here, go down the space elevator. And we're here. And remove that stop. And we're done ski. Alright, so Holmium Cable, make Holmium Accumulator. How many are we trying to make right now? A few hundred. Maybe I'll just put that on hold for the moment. Just, just stop with the Holmium Accumulators for now. That reminds me, I think we didn't get all the Holmium Accumulators built at FabT. Uh, I just hope that's more than enough to avoid any power surges when the space elevator cable is used. That could throw off the timing with the combinators. Because we could get some really weird, difficult to diagnose problems if sends stuff on this channel 
when other stations are supposed to be using it. Okay. What's next? Oh, hey, we do have multi-cylinder engines here somehow. Is it because we're making them on the spot? Probably, maybe. I did a search for them earlier and they weren't in space at all. But I don't see anything here to make multi-cylinder engines. And yet, we're making locos. Oh, here it is. Yeah, we're making them on the spot. I can live with that, but just locos. Alright. So, more importantly, uh, can we get some... Can we get our train loaded? I don't know how I would make a system that would say, just give up on loading this thing this time, if it takes like a minute. But that would be nice. Let's park ourselves over here. No more blue panels in train? Do you mean I should change out the old sp uh, solar panels? Soon, TM. Let's wait for Holmium to catch up before we really go ham on spending Holmium some more. Brum. And our trains are already coming. Fantastic. It's probably going to take two trips to build this. Let's schedule it right now. Wait for inactivity. Actually, wait for passenger present. Give me a ride back after you do a lap. I think you disabled pylon production at the mall as well. Oh. You're right. <laughs> Dag nabbit. Good memory. Zetius, Boovin, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So is it literally just for pipe that we need the train to come back? It is. Nothing but pipe. Uh, so do we have ballistic shielding data? We don't. We might have explosion data. We don't have ballistic shielding data because I haven't dealt with um, putting pistol magazines into the rail network yet. I think I did the math on... Um... Oh, this is sand. I don't remember putting sand here. Who's been playing my Factorio save? Also, why did I need to bring up sand? as sand. Let's see. Uh, probably just for particle stream. Me? Well, it turns out there was a good reason, so thanks for that. Uh, alright, so let's put pistol mags, like, about here, maybe? Next to the other weird little things that we bring up. Pistol Magazine Quester Pistol Magazine And 
change that to everything. Um, and then we'll just put an icon here. We need to do a build downstairs. The pistol mags. How fast is this? I doubt we're ever going to double this one. Uh, 40.8 pistol mags per sec. Okay. Where's our construction tr- oh, it's right here. Wait, why don't you have more space pipe? What? What? Still needs 39. How did it come back? It shouldn't have been able to leave the station. Oh, it hasn't left yet, because I left that on freaking. I'm an idiot. Don't worry about it. Um, I could handcraft, but I'm not going to. This would normally be set on inactivity. Uh, but yeah, let's throw together a build for pistol mags. I don't imagine we're going to need more than a half belt, but a half block rather, for a good while to come. And drop off station. Uh, it's literally just coal and iron plate, I believe. Let me just check there's no, like, alternate recipe or something. I seriously doubt it. Pistol magazine. There is one recipe precisely. Okay, coal and iron. Um... And we'll throw in the usual beacon. Usual output station. Uh, I don't think LTN is going to be needed. We're not going to be delivering it to any stations on the ground. So we'll just do a regular train stop. If only to show that it's not for LTN. I guess we don't really need that many signals here either. I could make the train always leave this way, if I were so desired. Whatever, it's fine. Uh, let's see. We'll do the old... We only need like one belt, right? So I think... Doing it this way should be fine. Oh, but we've got two inputs. We can't prod module, so we'll speed module. And we probably won't need a beacon, because... I mean, it's probably more UPS efficient. For however much we're trying to make to have a big beacon, but it's probably just not going to be necessary. How fast is how fast is this with a few machines? We're looking for one belt. Oh, we need like three. Can we maybe squeeze this in somewhere that doesn't need a half block? I wonder if I've got somewhere like that lying around. I'm sure I do. We're going to get rid of this eventually. Uh, I can't really squeeze it in here. You know what? Just don't worry about it. Never mind. But I, I will leave room for extreme upgrade. To make it very easy to do later on. Leave 
room for a wide area beacon in there. Um, something like this. Coal and iron. Iron and coal. stuff. How fast are these individually? 18 per second in, per resource. Um, that's almost half a belt. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna use this excuse to use purple belts. Wait, that's all the more reason that, like, Expanding this to half a block eventually would be ridiculous. Whatever, it's fine. And that's quick. Okay, so we're just gonna do... Up splitter. Inputs. I was going to move this over to the side, but it doesn't matter. Actually, have to pause it to make sure that's facing the right way. Okay. That's not quite right. You know what, just for the hell of it, put iron closer. Okay, test input. Uh, set filters blacklist. There we go. That's rather quick. And we get 72 per second out, which is less than one purple belt. About like this. How about this instead? Think we've got enough room for expansion. Oh, you know what? I think I'd rather have. Uh, also, we don't have room for the beacon there, but whatever. It's easy to change. Um, when are we ever going to use a need a beacon for these anyway? Look at how fast they are. Let's do splitter. We're only ever going to pick it up with long train. That looks kind of tacky. That would look even worse. Okay. So we're just going to not limit this. This will be pistol mag pickup. This will be iron plate and coal requester. Going into advanced, and out comes pistol mag. And then we just need to request iron plate. A uh, couple of train loads.
that should be fine. And that's our build. Gratuitous as it is. Pistol mag. I'm sure I could have built this with primitive machines and gone more than fast enough ages ago. But we have very few machines, so that's got to be good for UPS. Um, snap to grid. 86.25.1. And then... Looks like it fits properly. And that's our build. And we'll put this next to material science because that's what it's supporting. Nothing else. Okay. Um, where should I put it? I want to put it kind of... I could put it here facing the other way. But like, I want to put it kind of close to the space elevator, but it's not that big of a deal. But again, if we ever go full speed with this... What are we needing? Only 40.8 per second. Doesn't it stack to like 200? So that shouldn't actually be much of a problem. So we can put it anywhere, I think. Let's put it over here. Nice and close to the mall, because I don't have purple belts in the construction train. And we don't need much, so I'll just grab it. Speaking of which, I haven't, um... I haven't done the purple belts. Did I reactivate these? Purple belt... Uh... And purple belt. Fantastic. We could probably ask for a bit more by now. Make sure we can actually use it. Elevator we go. I want to go, even though it's gratuitous, I want to go upgrade the space elevator cable build with the purple belt. Give me that. And I might actually have to search for the rest. Nope, here's some undergrounds. Two to go. No, let's search. Storage. Purple belt. Here it is. And last but not least. Splitters. We need all of one or two of these. Okay. Can I get some more speed? Even more speed than that. Did I bring enough loaders? Yeah, I think we're good. Wow, that is fast. Look at it go. And why is this guy holding aeroframe poles? Doesn't look like it'd be a problem though. Can the fast inserters even pick up from a bubble belt? <laughs> look at this. I can't move. Meow. Meow. Seizure warning. Well, anyway, um, that's that build upgraded. Construction train just came back, so it should have finished its job except for purple belt. Uh, 
I wish the uh, bigger cargo wagons worked with the construction train stuff. And there it goes. <gasps> LTN needs to know what we've got here. Oh no. It's going to take at least seven seconds to go through the excess stuff that was dropped off here. Damn. And there it goes. This is half the speed, by the way, of how quickly this is filling up. Okay, so now we need a train. Uh, I'll put it up here. We'll start with... the Holmium Core Fragment Schedule. And edit from there. I need to give it some speedy stuff, though. And that's something. No, the train left. I was going to use it. Mm. I need a Spidertron. Actually, Spidertrons are going to be really, really, really slow compared to these trains. And I don't suppose the Spidertron can ride the space elevator. Where am I going? Back to the mall? Taxi? Taxi's busy. Taxi is coming here. Let's meet it halfway. Is this the spot? No. Is this the spot? No. Is this... We missed it. Uh, come back. No, I can't even. No. It's already gone. It's, it's already gone. Bro. Uh, taxi, come and get me after you drop that off, please. We are occasionally getting scratches on our ships, but it doesn't look like any of them have stopped. No? Okay. Where's that train? Let me in. Ooh, good thing I jetpacked over it, or it would have insta-killed me just now. Like, I had the briefest thought of running through the middle of it, but nope. Okay. Let's grab... some speed. For our new train. And it's going to be moving pistol. What? Pistol mags. Full cargo. Empty cargo. Uh, this is backward though. It needs to go up the space elevator. Drop stuff off, and then go down the space elevator and pick stuff up. Cool. Let's make sure it works. Empty cargo, full cargo, fantastic. Grab 
dump some fuel. Or some batteries, I should say. They work kind of like fuel. And how many pistol mags do we have by the time we get here? Ah, uh, probably a train full. Nice. Stack size to 100 actually does take a little while to load with the bulk rail loaders. And up the elevator we go. Into a depot. And finally deliver the pistol mags. Come to think of it, I probably could have had... No. I was going to say I could have this thing delivered directly to here, but since it's a multi-drop-off, that's not really going to work. And this is the one place where we're actually feeling the slowness of these belts. Let's get construction train to visit. What happened to those space belts? Oh, I think the space belts that I was carrying all that time uh, just happened to get placed somewhere. Fantastic. There we go. That's a little better. So once there's a hundred stacks, or hundred and twenty I think it is, detected here. Train's gonna take it to make ballistic shielding data. And we will maybe have material three. We're also missing explosion, which is a bit odd. Uh, I think I know why. I think I solved the mystery. Why we don't have explosion shielding data here. I hope we still have room for it. Probably. Alright, here it comes. Here it comes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we'll have room. Even though we ended up with two train loads of radiation shielding data. How many pistol mags do we have here now? Not as many as I expected. Kind of thought the next train load would already be... Uh, it's pretty close. It's like 90% full. Pistol mag. What a tiny, tiny build. It's all we're ever going to need here, though. I didn't even consider taking into account how far the trains have to go with the iron plate and coal, but maybe I should have. We've got really fast trains, though. Alright, so that should be uh, Material Catalog 3. No further action needed from us before that ends up in the rail network. And once we get Material Catalog 3, we should have 
Material Science Pack 3. Very cool. And once we have Material Science Pack 3, you better believe it's energy beaming time. Energy beam. And then we can do lasers, which will help our ships not get damaged. Uh, and for some reason I can't even... What? What's this other... What? Wait, wait, what? Where's this other prerequisite? Uh... I, I can't even... Oh no. Where? What? Who? What? What other prerequisite is there for this one? Is is it this way? I'm so confused. I'm guessing it'll be a little bit clearer once we get there. I certainly hope so. There's nothing for level 9. There's an additional prerequisite for level 10. Uh, yeah, this is 9. I was talking about 10. Oh, is it this one? But I don't see what we're missing for personal laser mark 4. Oh, a lot, actually. For some reason, we need bio and advanced tech card. Okay, then. Okay, then. How's our bullets? There we go. We got bullets. Here comes LTN train for bullets. Fantastic. And we can finally see that last tech card getting built. I forgot how long it takes to load this. It's like 10 seconds or so. Almost off of Nalvis, nice. Artsman, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Suddenly blanking on if I said hello to Morpheus. Is this busted? Why is this full? Oh no. Oh no, how much have we got here? 4.7k, 2.2, 1.6... Hold on, blank is 1.7. This says less than 3k. Uh... I don't think we need this many stacks of material testing pack in here. I must have miscalculated something. What do we got? 256 stacks. And there's four different items we want to put in here, right? Let's call it 250 stacks. Uh, about 62 stacks each. Or 60 stacks each. 60 times 10 is 600. So that should have been correct. Uh, 50 times 60. 3000. That should be correct. Iridium plate, 40 times 60, 2.4k, and I think I know where this is going. So that seems to be right, but it got all clogged, kind of. Let me just... Well, I was going to say I would reduce uh, these numbers, but we might end up with drop-off problems. Well, let's try it anyway. Cut these in half. And 
And if we see an LTN train struggling to drop off here because this is full, we'll change it. I don't feel like doing the math right now. Is this having trouble outputting scrap? Theoretically, we get 24.48 scrap per second. That's actually more than half a belt. There we go. Cool. Sushi go burr. And ballistic shielding data is going to take a little while. Uh, four per second. We're looking at 20.42 minutes. Before oh, we get a train load. And then it's going to be, I think it's like 20 minutes or so. Oh, it's even worse. Whoops. Um, 1.12 per second. And these stack to 50, right? Over an hour. God damn it. So we're looking at like two hours before we get our material science pack three. Is the scrap pickup train okay? That looked strange. What? Scrap pickup train. Uh oh. 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 Oh, hey, this train is back. I was just about to borrow it. Why are we... Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. I forgot one little step here. To tell it not to bring Holmanite core fragments... Uh... To the trash. Whoopsie daisy. How many Holmanite core fragments do you think we have here by now? 30,000. Well. That is a little bit unfortunate. We do have a system to automatically offer them to LTN, but it's not LTN that picks them up. We'll have to do something about that directly. Okay, where are we going? Pick up even more Holmanite core fragments? No. Where was I trying to go? Down to this train. We're, we're going to be stopping right next to it by coincidence. Good day, Midden. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so how did this happen? We've got Iridium Plate, Heavy Gota, Ballistic Shielding Data, and only small amounts of it. Which build did it come from? I don't see a way... Oh. Oh. Well, that's embarrassing. Uh, superior Long Filter Inserter uh, Scrap. Well, there's your problem. I can't believe I overlooked that. Can I just upgrade this? It won't have a filter. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we would have noticed before now if it was the first build that caused problems like this. 
Also, it had the data cards from the second build, so that's kind of a hint. Alright, are we good? No more data cards or something on this belt? Seems well. And... Scrap train... Good go. Fantastic. And another one. That's not too surprising, coming from material science. Alright, so... Within a couple of hours, we should have... Um... Material 3. How much power do we have? Quite a lot. I'm guessing these don't consume that much. Why don't we make a little exception here? And have the research servers go extra fast. So at that rate, we're looking at... 1.92 per second. So, 40, that's still like 43.4 minutes. Ouchie. I mean, that is a lot enough for a lot of science, but still. Okay. Pulmonite core fragments are looking good. I don't really need to do anything about those for the moment. Unless I want to do another one of these builds. Are we catching up? Hard to say. Hard to say. Considering the number of... Oh, that would probably help. Well, it won't help with the overall throughput, but it will summon a train now. Where are you going with that? To make cables. Perfect. Okay. We're not very bottlenecked on processing at the moment. But we're behind enough that maybe I should speed it up. Or I could spend some time designing while it catches up. So we're going to have energy beaming with no further action. If we haven't messed something up somehow. What should we do next? Uh, that might be the perfect time to take a little break, actually. We kind of need it. Hello, Mr. JJ. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's do LTN screensaver. And some words on stream. Find out if Veldak is here. Words on stream is being extremely slow again. Much schnell bitte. Oh, wow. What, are they running it on a 56k modem?
Is it getting DDoSed? Stephanie the kitten? I, uh, can I get that train blueprint somewhere? That block is awesome. Uh, yeah, if you go to the Discord, it's all there. Um, I actually updated the blueprint book for all of the SEK2 so far. Just yesterday. Alright, it is finally loading. Good gravy. Should have prepared it beforehand, I guess. Thank you, you're welcome. I will steal that too. Fantastic. Highest form of flattery. Alright. We'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon. Joined at the best time, indeed. Alright, back in a few minutes.
Fantastic. Alright, let's continue, shall we? With space exploration. Pulmonite is getting moved. This is good. I haven't had a single word so far. I saw someone mention it was a very hard level one. Um, that does happen sometimes. The algorithm is not perfect at giving a good difficulty curve. Ooh, more Holmium cable. This is good, this is good. Holmium cable. Um, it's extremely spiky. We have way more production capacity than Holmium input. Um, the Holmium cable, it's been like this for a long time. So yeah, we really don't need a wide area beacon there at the moment. Or maybe ever, given all that blank space in there. Actually kind of tempted to show this words on stream thing to my English teaching colleagues. I bet they'd have some fun with it. Space elevator cable is super saturated. You love to see it. And where now is our next task? Oh, um... No, I, I think I will leave it with the missing tag for tier 4. Because I can't even select the recipe yet, so that kind of shows it's unfinished. Here comes more barrel downstairs. So I kind of had it in my head that I would slap together the last of Material 3, and then, you know, in a little while we would have energy beaming, and then we'd have something new to do. But it's not quite playing out that way. Um, I don't really feel like going and improving some of our existing outposts right now, or making a new one. Um, I'd really like to have energy beaming before I go to Moss Garden, so that we have one less planet that we need to clear out manually. Ion Hauler 3 incoming. Oh, it's actually two ships on their way over here. This is fine. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm kind of oddly a little bit stuck right now as to what I want to work on. You know what, I should spam... I was getting barrel confused with Holmium for a second there. Maybe we should do a, another Holmium build instead of this weird mess. But it feels bad spending time rehashing builds that we've already done, even if it is better coverix. Uranium fuel cells. Go up here. Aga Hondra, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That's looking pretty good. That's looking very, very good, I must say. Although I find it odd that we dumped a bunch of U-235 in here, but then at the moment over here it's empty. I guess it needs to saturate Coverex entirely and then saturate this. Which should be the higher priority. Yeah, no, that's fine. When do I get electric inserts, please? I can't do this hand-feeding hell anymore. Oh no. Uh, Gazalnik. 
Thank you very, very much for the six months with Prime. Much appreciated. And good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I could grab this Holmanite here, but like... It's really... Uh, we're bottlenecked on actually uh, processing it at the moment. Relatively quickly? The pain will make you stronger. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. Okay, how about we work on some kind of build while resources catch up? That makes sense. This is one of the great things about... Well, this is honestly the great thing about uh, editor extensions having this surface that we can access all the time. All right, let's start with this. Build your character. Rayclaw, good to see you again. Read the words as well. Okay, uh, so we've done one build from Bioscience 1, I believe. We've done uh, Combustion and Biomechanical. And that leaves... Where is it? Uh, should be biochemical. It's not the same word. Biochemical engine. Oh god, genetic. Di oh no, I remember how this goes. Yeah, these builds are not going to fit neatly into our ordered little world, are they? Biochemical is probably pretty straightforward. Biomass, Vit, Spice, Blank, Chemical Gel, and Outcomes, Biochemical Data, and some Fluid. It's actually really easy. Oh god, the Biomass Despair, indeed. Uh, let's get some Floor in here. And start with a wide beacon. Drop off. Pick up. See we ha where we go from there. Um, we're going to do biochemical facilities, because they are, I think, literally the only thing that makes biochemical data. And we're just going to fit as many as we can, which is not that many, around a white beacon. Can we actually line them up this way? Probably not. Probably not. Oh, that's wrong. There we go. So... These never face each other except for the middle ones. Um, we also need to get the data cards out. If we only have the one fluid input on the outside... Then... We could probably do it like this. And space belt. Um, I forgot there's two, there's three physical inputs actually. Yucky. Including biomass, which has a minuscule stack size. If there's one thing that's tempting me to not do standardized modular train blocks for everything, it's biomass, because of that stack size of 5. And a build like this that gives us 8.32 biochemical data per second, that's actually relatively really fast. But it would go through 
8.32 biomass per second, which is only like one and a half stacks. Um, it's the output fluids that are by far the biggest headache here. Since we can only fit two of these in each quarter, we may as well use up all the extra space that we've got. That's probably going to make it quite a lot easier. Uh, let's see. If... Uh, that's not going to be good enough. Seven? I don't know if that's going to reach. It does. We'd only be able to do our outputs nowhere, actually. Um, maybe we'll do the fluids a little bit further away. Something like this. If we're not going to do a sushi belt or anything. Because we've got three solids input. One to one to one, though. How fast would this be if we beacon it up and stuff? Probably way faster, judging by what we saw already. Like, way faster than other builds, and we don't actually need to go this fast. But I just don't feel like planning the entire base with, uh, like, recipe book. Well, not recipe book, the other one. Factory planner. Um, so we'll just aim for, like, single digit per second cards of each type and go from there. So if we do our output pipes like this. On the other side, it's not going to be symmetrical either. What is your beacon philosophy? Uh, most of the time, cram as much as I reasonably can under one beacon. With SE, the, that's the way the beacons work. You can't stack two of them. Uh, I much, much, much prefer this mechanic to vanilla. I think in vanilla where you're incentivized to cram as many beacons as possible around a single uh, a single machine. This is hideous. I, I hate it. I hate everything about it. Um, truly, I do. It's nasty. They also use a disgusting amount of power for what they do. Never used beacons in vanilla? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm probably never going to do, like, mega bases in vanilla because I, I hate... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, you're kind of railroaded into builds that are shaped a certain way, because there's very, very, very few options, well, practically no options, to get the most out of, you know, minimum UPS consumption. I genuinely hope the expansion steals this for beacons, this design. Yeah, true. Uh, you know what? I remember I was doing something similar with a build not long ago. It was probably mechanical science, this one or this one. And some bright spark said, why don't you do the lubricant input with the one fluid input in the middle? Much simpler. Because where we have the limited space, we'll do the limited... Uh, the more simple input. Input slash output. 
And we could just, because of the beacon as well, we could have our two belts of input down here. Consumption is not going to be very fast. Compared to belt speeds. 10.8 per second for each thing. Way less than half a belt. So... I like where this is going now. So we'll just... We'll, we'll maybe do the usual... Close together stuff. Oops. Kind of like this, though. Uh, I can't make it not complain, potentially, about thinking fluids are being mixed when they're actually not, if I do them all close together like this, but I still kind of want to do it that way. Let's see. Are we still going to have room for inputs? Yes, we are. Fantastic. Very, very good indeed. That's actually going to go up here, I think. And then, same thing on the opposite side. Outputs are not going to be quite mirrored, but that's okay. And technically I could use one and a half belt here for the output, but I'm not going to do that. It's going to be kind of gross. Alright, so... If I lay it out like this, it swaps the middle. Maybe... Maybe I will do it like that. So one... Two... Three... Four for contaminated water. And... This one would be contaminated by a sludge. And then... Can't actually do any of the other outputs this way. Whoops. That doesn't work. Let's move it up and or down a little bit. I'll try moving it down. Bye, Cal. Thank you very much for the... S -u 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 -up. Thank you very, very much for the 10 months. Much appreciated. Thank you. And a welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. So is that is that consistent? Yes. And yes. So then we could do output belt like this. And probably do the opposite output like this. I think I think that's gonna work. I think we're on to something. Alright, how many tiles is this? Nine? I think. Yep. No, it's seven. Even better. That's not seven, that's nine. How come... How come this is eight tiles? Am I missing something? This is nine tiles. By nine tiles. But if I do a 9 between those two, this is 8? Is there a gap here I'm not seeing? No? What? What? Someone help me make it make sense. 9 tiles. Um, make it more visible. This is clearly nine tiles. This is nine tiles. This is nine tiles. This is nine tiles. These two come out at the same spot. So... Oh no, that's right. That's... Derp. 
Yeah, I get it. I get it. It's natural that it's like that because it's the next pipe should align the same. Okay. So eight tiles means we can't do a nice pattern, unfortunately. Oh, and this is the part where it thinks it's uh, contaminated because... Because it doesn't understand where all the fluids are actually going. Missing your count of zero, indeed. What if I do sevens? There's going to be an even number between these two no matter what I do, right? Three, 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 and three. Why don't I just do this? Just like I did with the other ones. That's pretty consistent. Okay. So input belts are going to go down to here. We're going to have... Fast and long. Fast and long. And then output. There's only one solid output. I could move this over a couple of tiles. We might be able to fit our other fluid output here. Maybe. Not if it's on the left, because the station has to be on the right. Unless I have it come down from here. I think I'll just do... the other fluid. I could do all three output here, actually. Because I'm pretty sure the half block is all we need. And the fluids should be slow. 108 per second each. That's probably okay. Um, as long as we connect How many tiles is that? Nine. As long as we connect directly to a big tank. What's this? 50k? I think. Uh, yeah. 50k. 100k. Wagon can take 60k. That should be alright. So we're going to read from the logistic train stop output. We'll get a signal for whichever flu... Oh my god. Bruh. Ravna. You know what? It's fine. We're just going to pretend like we need a ludicrous storage here. It's fine. Actually, no, it's not fine because I need this signal to not pick up whatever fluid it is this red wire. I'm gonna need arbitrary things to connect to. I don't want it. Mm. What if I use a splitter here? Just so that there's belt here. Something a little bit like this. And then red wire can jump across here. No condition on the belt. That looks tacky as hell, but I hate putting down extra entities just to connect the wires. If I connect red wire to one of these containers, 
And these are only checking for fluid. And this doesn't care if you feed it a signal. That might actually be fine. That also looks tacky as hell. Uh, yucky. That's maybe not as bad. Okay, so if we have contaminated, go here. That doesn't look great either. What if I have some big tanks here? Some huge tanks. So far, so much better. We also have ludicrous storage. I can't fit one on this side, though. Rip symmetry. Why is there a piece of regular rail under the thing? Uh, so basically, the bulk rail loader's graphic um, for these pieces of rail is regular rail. Um, but if you line them up in such a way with an odd number of tiles between them, uh, one of them is going to line up perfectly so that it only uses up two... You only have to remove two pieces of rail. Uh, and these two happen to fit on either side in such a way that the space rail covers up the appearance of regular rail. Whereas if I remove three of these and put this in the middle... Those pieces of rail are basically part of the bulk rail loader. And the bulk rail loader doesn't have its own, like... It, it doesn't check for space rail and change the graphic or anything. Very awkward. Yeah, it's either this or... Put them closer together so that they don't line up properly with the cargo wagons. Even though that would actually work. Um, I don't feel like that looks very good either. That boy, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hmm. Hmm, I see. I could also... No. No, I could not. I know I'm spending way too much time on this little, little, little aesthetic thing. Um, but I like to make my builds look nice, if at all possible. If at all possible. It's a real shame, I, I've said this before, but it's a real shame I didn't make the build the rail block build ever so slightly bigger. Partly so that we could fit the huge storage tanks on both sides like this. And partly because once we get to space, occasionally we really would like to fit more big machines under the wide area beacons in a half block. Alright, fine. We'll do it. Um, we'll do it the cringe way. We'll put in a add-on power pole. And the red wire is going to go across here. That actually looks the least bad. By far. Don't know about these long pipes through here, though. Do I want to make it so that short trains can pick this up? Probably. And 60k threshold. 
needs to be high priority, is full of bees. Ruh -roh. Is there such a thing as a big enough city block, though? Uh, definitely. I mean, I made significantly bigger city blocks last playthrough. I'm actually really happy with these ones. Um, just in hindsight, I would have made them ever so slightly bigger. Making it bigger would have caused a lot of issues. I noticed that if the space between the rails and the station rails divided by two is odd, you can't rotate your blueprints because it would miss a line. Uh, I had that problem actually, but someone pointed out you can actually... Um, so I offset this by 2525 and then this thing, whatever that is, as one and one, and I can actually rotate these blueprints. Um, well, you can't actually see it, but I'm rotating it right now. Whenever I finish a build, I check that it rotates. See, now you've said they need to be bigger, we can't unsee it. Oh no. RV Park, welcome, welcome. Uh, so how do I want to do input for these? Probably... this is going to be really slow, isn't it? 10.8 per second. If I didn't mind getting, like, four items stuck on a belt permanently, or eight, then I really could use a half belt here for the output. But... I am not like that. Uh, this is, this one's different. That's okay, I guess. Let's do the outputs here. And then... Into... The back. And then into the front. Limit the front to one cargo wagon. Actually, no, let me check something. Uh, biochemical data. It goes into catalog and it goes into experimental genetic data. We're never going to have a short train pick this stuff up, so let's just balance it. Alright. Train length 4, fantastic. Um, limit those to one train load. And... I could honestly just have it put in like this without regard to balancing because it'll stop at one train load. Or rather, what I usually do, if we're going to do it this way, have a 3x3 three three chest in the middle, and we can store an extra 40 stacks, potentially. Only trouble with that is this doesn't reach. Maybe I'll put... Okay, that just fits too well not to do. So we can store 200k of each fluid. That seems good to me. Now that I have this here... Uh, I wouldn't say that's an improvement. Visually. Okay. Don't forget the green wires. Oh, that looks weird. That's going to look strange no matter what I do. Whatever, it's fine. That's what we'll tell ourselves anyway. 
So we're going to need some filters. Um... These are all consumed at the same rate, but biomass has by far the smallest stack size. They're all going to be consumed pretty slowly, right? 10.88 per second. So we'll go for maybe... How much? We've got 640 stacks. That is six train loads with a bit of change. Uh, we could go two train loads of each, but that doesn't seem necessary. We could go 1.5, 1.5, that's three... And three train loads of biomass potentially because the stack size is so small. Five times 300 is 1500. That needs updating. And the other two were stack size 50. Uh, 150 stacks, 7,500. Vitamelange Spice, I think it was. And blank data cards, of course. Always blank data cards. And then we've got... Chemical Gel. That we need to drop off. We'll do the chemical gel input here. Ronto de Bonto, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I guess I could have done the same thing here, but then there wouldn't have been room for this in the middle. So we only have one uh, input fluid, and it's quite slow. And I can actually line that up here. Maybe just connect these like this. Very neat. Okay, so if we are filling this up more or less to the brim, we can't just flow everything through here. That won't work. We'll have to, like, merge and split kind of thing. Uh, I might need... I either need to do three loaders coming from each of these. Actually, I'm going to need to do that regardless. Let's do Vitamelage and Blank on the same belt. Since they have the same stack size and everything. Oh, that's not quite right, is it? Blank, Data, Card. And then, actually, maybe this would be a neater way to do this. This will be biomass. Just like that. Is that more tidy? I think it is. Compared to what? Compared to something like this. Yeah, I think that's... I think I like the one on the left a lot better. Definitely. Uh, but we need to take it from both sides. How shall we do that? We'll do a little mergey wergy. And 
Same thing over here, I guess. That's kind of some built spaghetti, isn't it? Do you have them equipped? Nanobots, please do something. I've never played with the nanobots. Plus one? What are we plus oneing? What do you guys think? Is this pretty tidy or could we do better? The only way I can think to do better for just how clean it looks is to have like a 4x4 four four container here that both uh, bulk rail unloaders go into. Which we'd then have to do the filtered outputs from to do the split belts anyway. Too many outputs for one final belt? One final belt? What do you mean? Um, let's do some test input. So we're here, we're going to go red wire that connects just to the local container. Set filters blacklist means as soon as you put something in, uh, it is on the blacklist. This won't pick up any electrolysis plants. And then we're going to go shift right click, shift left click. Uh, and then we're going to do some chemical gel. Over here. Four outputs onto one belt. Oh! Well, no, it's not, but um, I accidentally. I, I accidentally uh, did like 50 50 on either side of the belt here. Unfortunately, that would not work consistently. Um, because the machines are unreliable in the way that they take from them. So we're just gonna... Do it like this. Accidental sushi belt, indeed. Funky splitter magic, yes indeed. Alright, let's tidy up the belt. And why are we not outputting anything? Because we broke the fluid connection. And now it thinks this is a problem. There we go. Cool. Why are we not outputting on the right side? Because we don't have any long arm inserters, that's why. Seems good. Uh, and then we need to connect our waste outputs. Uh, whichever is going to be more convenient to connect to either side. Let's see how far 15 reaches over here. And then... That's perfect. I think we'll go with that. Oh, that's too perfect. Yes. So we're doing a uh, content. What the fuck? Uh, it seems to th think that we've got multiple fluids in the one fluid network. We know that we know that's not true though. Let's just see if this works. So contaminated bio sludge is gonna go all the way down here. I certainly hope we're not gonna have to reshape this. Uh, and then what's this? Nine tiles, I think. Hope, fifteen. That's uh, thirteen actually. Five, three, and three. And four tiles over here. That tends to happen when you put those machines next to each other. Yes. Uh, 
As long as it actually works, it's fine. That looks decent. And then, last but not least... Left side has stopped working. It could have been because of outputs. That's yeah, pretty tidy, I think. Alright, before we forget, uh, whichever fluid the train is trying to pick up is going to get a positive signal from the logistic train stop output. So, contaminated bio sludge. Contaminated by a sludge greater than zero. And contaminated cosmic water greater than zero. Seems good. Now we need to do our station name. Don't forget this green wire. Uh, let's see. We are requesting all of this stuff. Biomass. Spice. Blank. And... Chemical gel. It's going into one of these. Where is it? And out comes biochemical data, I believe it was. Beautiful. Uh, and then station name down here is a high priority pickup for biochemical data and the two contaminated fluids. Seems good. Now we remove the excess scaffolding. But we'll add a little bit back in just so it doesn't look too tacky. I did it. I launched 50 rockets in each asteroid field. How many did you get? Uh, I presume you're launching them for arcospheres, right? How many arcos are you get? This guy, this fucking guy, there we go. Congrats, why? Why anything in Factorio? RF Holloway, Captain True, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Eric's welcome also. Alright, that looks reasonably tidy. Or at least as tidy as scaffolding is going to look. Let's fill this out here, I guess. Close enough. Don't forget to get rid of the cheat inputs. Not that we can accidentally cheat with this. Seems fine. Alright, blueprint. Biochemical data. And absolute snap to grid 86251. And then I think that's it. Snap to grid looks good. We can rotate. And this is going to go down here. 
Okay, so the nightmare remains. Uh, we need to figure out genetic data all over again. Oh, it's different with K2. We need lithium chloride. Have I brought lithium chloride up the space elevator yet? I don't think so. Oh, wait, is that it? No? I'm pretty sure I haven't. Let's see, um... Chloride. There's nothing in a box up here for lithium chloride. Alright, we'll probably just put it here. We'll see. 2.2k SPM even for tier 4s? I feel I will need lots of spheres for fast throughput, aiming for 2.2k. Yikes. Okay. That's terrifying. Um, uh, got all the pistol mags we'll ever need. Maybe not quite that many. Judging by this, I think we've had a delivery of ballistic shielding data. We have. And we have... Ooh! We're getting there. Uh, 200, 400, and a bit. Um, let's say 450. In about four minutes, we should be making our first mechanical three science packs. Fantastic. Beautiful. Okay, uh, should we jump back into the editor and look at this nightmare? What was it called again? Bio... Genetic data. It's not genetic data in and of itself. It's... The number of things it interacts with. I remember having genetic data... Yeah, 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 there's two things that genetics facilities do, right? And we want to have them next to each other. There's, no, there's more recipes than that. But the main thing I'm thinking of is genetic data and... something that consumes one-tenth of a genetic data, effectively. This is it. Bioculture. Um, it takes 50 biosludge and makes 10 bioculture. Turns one genetic data into junk data. It needs nutrient vats. The stack sizes for those are tiny, as I recall. Yep. So we really want to do some of these in a shared block. Because the stack size is really, 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 really bad. I need to do a whole, like, diagram. How do we make nutrient vats? Nutrient vat is made in biochemical facility. Um, nutrient gel, I think, only goes into this. Nutrient gel actually goes into unit capsules, which we'll probably never make. Um, and then? Biomass, experimental biomass. Okay. Biomass plus nutrient gel makes neural gel. Okay, neural gel plus nutrient makes this stuff. There's a few things. I stand very much corrected. Okay, so we're definitely bringing in nutrient gel from elsewhere. All three of these things just go from the rail system 
to make nutrient vat. How many things do nutrient vat go into? Do we ever consider cramming it all into one rail block? Or even a big shared rail block? Arco balancing at that speed sounds like a pain. Yeah. Good challenge. Uh, vat. Nutrient vat. Goes into bioculture, which is like a different colored nutrient vat. Experimental bioculture, which is the same. Uh, you need it to make a genetics facility. But as, re as I recall, we're going to make so few of these throughout the playthrough that we can just like manually grab these. And that's it. So just these two different types of vats. So there's nothing that the nutrient vats get used for directly other than making the genetics facilities. Um, therefore, it should probably... probably be in the same block. One of the nice things about the fact that we can't use any prod modules in space is... I could be wrong about this, but I think... Our ratios stay the same, right? Assuming we have the same number of speed modules that we can put in things. Um, can we fix this so it's like one to one? Let's see. Uh, it looks like it's four to one. Perfect. So exactly eight nutrient bats per second made and consumed. If we put a bunch of speed modules in these, the ratio stays exactly the same. If we beacon it, no matter what weird stuff we do with the beacon, uh, it should still be the same, right? No matter how fast or how many efficiencies we put in it, The volume of the gap between these will change, but, like, the ratio will stay the same. So that's cool. We can actually do a multi-step build uh, without it... without upgrades later on messing up the ratio. Alright. As I recall, we only ever need, like, one machine to make... Uh, genetic data, it's really, really, really fast. Four per second. Compared to demand, it's really, really, really fast. I could be wrong. Let's have a look at our material three. It's been delivered. It's not here. What? Where the heck else could it have gone? Uh, I hope we didn't have a incorrect request signal somewhere. Good thing we have factory search. Material catalog three. Oh, right. I forgot. Uh, I set it up so that we need it to make... Wait, what? We haven't upgraded this yet. Do we have the recipe? Let me just check without disrupting things. Uh, we do. Okay, that's going to be more efficient, but the only downside is we have to wait for a whole other trainload of Catalog 3 before we get... before we get our Material 3 uh, science. Unfortunate. Also, I will of course want to do Universal Simulation. Wait, do we have that yet? I don't think so. 
Universal Simulation... I have been putting off Bio 1 for far too long. We could have done this ages ago. Bruh. We do need a tier 2 computer though. Which we've already got. Quantum processors. Have I done those yet? Quantum processor. I have not. Okay, it's a couple of steps away. Um, but yeah. Let's just double check. All of these are now set to the tier 3 recipe. That uses comprehensive catalogs as well. Not that we need them for a little while. So, yeah, that's another almost hour, or like half an hour or something, before we get Material 3 science happening. We do already have the physical inputs to get that done, though. So there's that, at least. Okay. So... So nutrient bad itself doesn't go into anything uh, directly, except for making genetics facility, and we can just steal some for that. And we'll only ever need to make like a handful of genetics facilities. Uh, therefore, we want to kind of like direct insert them, or just chuck them on a belt or something. We're making experimental bioculture. And we're making uh, bioculture. All right, let's have a look. Both require bio sludge. This one requires spice, this one requires extract. This one requires genetic data, this one requires experimental genetic data. Experimental comes from another one of these. Uh, plus biochemical data. Well, that's a nice straightforward recipe for once. Two in, one out. Does experimental go to anything else? Uh, catalog. So yeah, that's going to need to be exported. Which means we could maybe just have experimental in the rail network. As opposed to any kind of direct insertion here. Okay, um, so I'm just going to make like some notes here with infinity loaders, the things that we need to bring in from the rail network. Uh, spice, genetic data, unless we're making the genetic data here. Genetic data. Um, this will be local, and this will be from the rail network. And on this one, it's Vitam Lunge Extract. Right. And experimental genetic data. What's our ratio like? This makes... Was that on per minute before? I thought it said 8. Oh, I put in a bunch of speed modules. Let's keep it simple. Okay, 8 per second, 8 per second, 8 per second. So theoretically, we would need 8 of these machines to keep up with these two simultaneously. 
Um, two solids, one fluid in, one solid out. I don't think I'm going to be doing, like, direct insertion here. Well, did I finish this build? Did I blueprint it? I think I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's done. And I know where I want to put it as well, but there's a big mess that I haven't cleaned up yet. Uh, I guess the mess is only on the right side of this block. There's this crap as well, though. We can probably make something of that. Probably. I don't have a decon train up here. I'm gonna have to go fix that myself. Not looking forward. I won't bother with it until we can get bio one like working um but yeah we do have this blueprinted so again i'll double check fantastic probably just leave most of that where it is for now um in fact we're gonna put this in here So, let's grab all of this. Oh, that's kind of bigger than I realized it is. Can we do something kind of symmetrical? Preferably that fits under a beacon. So what if these were facing kind of like this? And then our rate is going to be faster sooner or later. Maybe some loaders would be a good idea. Well, how fast would we go with some speed and stuff? Let's pretend we go all speed nines, which we'll never do. That would be... A hundred per second. All right. I think I will do some loaders for output from this. Lines up. Not quite perfectly. How many tiles is this? Seven, that's why. It's probably fine. Um, pipe input, like so. Solid input, like so. Wait, how fast is it? 0.4 per second each. So even if we went really fast. 5 per second. Yeah, not worried. Alright, so... Half belt for each. And then, that should be fine. Well, that's not going to work. Maybe we'll do these coming from the middle. So 
So the whole idea was these tiny stack size things uh, we're going to be not sending into the rail network because what's this called? Bioculture? Culture goes into that plus nutrient gel makes biomass. We've got the nutrient gel here. That's pretty convenient. Pretty sure we need biomass in a dozen places. So we might have to put that in the rail network, but at least we'll be cutting down on stack size 5 things that we're moving around. Uh, we can make raw fish. I don't think we'll bother with that. Uh, we can also make wood, which we can do much more easily on the ground with K2. So it's really just biomass. And I think the purple stuff makes purple biomass and basically nothing else. Sometimes it spits out regular biomass. Other than that, the recipe is the same. Yeah, so we should definitely put these next to each other. Definitely, definitely. So we'll try and make biomass on this side and purple biomass on this side. What about the higher tier of biomass? There's like, uh... What is it called? Significant biomass. That is made with... This is a recycle. This is a recycle. Uh, experimental biomass, vitalic reagent, and neural gel. Could I squeeze all three into the one block? Would that even be worth it? It's going to spit out biosludge. We've already got biosludge being consumed in the block. Uh, how do we make it again? Which machine? Genetics facility. And we make the regular biomass. Really? What is it called? Debug mode. Uh, let's see. SE specimen, SE experimental specimen, significant specimen. Okay, so if we if we search specimen, uh, both of these are gonna spit out. The two, the same two fluids, contaminated biosludge and contaminated cosmic water. Wait, what? Oh. What? Left click? Oh, I see. I see, I see. These are the recycles. That's the one. That's the way to actually make the recipe. And for biomass, that's the way to actually make the recipe. Okay. 10 bioculture makes 10 biomass, and then we get 50 fluid out, contaminated biosludge, and contaminated cosmic. Um, and then. 10 makes up to 10. What doesn't come out as experimental biomass presumably comes out as regular biomass. And then we've got the same fluid outputs. If we're content to just throw those into the rail network, which I think we are, despite the tiny stack size, we are going to keep everything that consumes the biomass very close. 
Okay, I think we can make something kind of symmetrical with this build. I think. Um, where was it? That's what I was looking for. Which machine makes this? Growth facility. Also growth facility. And then this one's genetics facility. Okay. Growth facility. Oh, I remember these. Oh, no. I remember the output fluids being a horrible, messy nightmare. Okay, what's our ratio like, though? This makes 8 per second, this consumes 0 0.5, 0 0.5 per second? They have the same number of module slots? But that means I would need 16 of these to keep up. I'm not making 16 of these. Certainly not in the same rail block. Maybe we should do a big block. A, a big, like, 2x2 two two or something. Because I really don't want to be carting around biocultures in trains. It's bad enough that we'll be carting around the biomass. Uh, do we really have to have a perfect ratio? Questionable. No, we know the answer. The answer is yes. Okay, let's just build with without the bounds of a rail block and get a feel for just how big this is going to be. Uh, that's five, six, seven, eight. And then we have to worry about the double output fluids as well. That is... That is going to be a large one. Also, I don't think uh, it's going to fit elegantly under a beacon. Oh, no. I could do it like... Like this sort of thing. That's probably the way to go. So fluid inputs. Kind of wish the Niners had side connections now. Uh, fluid inputs like this. Or I could do a bunch of threes. That's going to look fairly tidy. Uh, we've got the contaminated biomass meeting each other in the middle, but how far can we go here? One more towel out. We'll just go as far out as we can, and then... Squeeze it down as much as we can afterwards. Let's have a look at our material three. We are about halfway done. Unless I've been building so long that I missed a delivery here. No, nope, we're good. Okay. So. If we have... Um, how about a bunch of threes like this? That actually lines up pretty reasonably. It's kind of consistent with this as well. 
and then those don't even behave the way I would like. Uh, let's see. Three, three. Underground like this. Perhaps. Why does it think that those two flew? Yeah, god damn it. Uh, why are you like this? Just ignore it. It's fine. Anyway, maybe something like that. I think maybe not. If this goes here and... Something like this. Can we fit something like that over here? Not where the beacon is. Can we make this wider and use the sides? Oh yeah, we totally can. If we don't mind using tons and tons of space, uh, we can absolutely do that. So we could be as spacious as something like this. But I think these things are large enough as, as it is. I'll try and squeeze them in a bit more. So, let's see. Maybe like this. It's unfortunate those don't line up. How many tiles is this? One, two, three between. So if we keep doing this... And then it's four between these ones. Yuck. What if this was a seven? Uh, what if these were fives? Now we're getting somewhere. That's looking a little bit less of a mess. Isn't there a problem with the different fluid inputs and outputs where the buildings touch? Uh, it thinks there's a problem, but actually no. Because these are, like, not able to... Like, contaminated cosmic water is not able to go into the input for bio... Uh, nutrient gel, rather. But when you're trying to place these things without using bots... Uh, it'll say that actually this is a problem. Um... What if... That doesn't work. Wait, how does that one work? Oh, I see. I see, I see. Maybe like this? Maybe like this? Okay. If we have these like so, let me just save this. 
And then on the other side. Maybe we don't necessarily have to like link them like this all the time. We could just connect them at the end somewhere. Fluid should be pretty slow. Yeah, fluid's going to be real slow. So I don't think we have to worry too much about the shape of the pipe. Um, I just realized that we're blocking the contaminated bio sludge. So what if we move all of these in one tile so that these can... Well, what about we just do this? Hold up, that's in the wrong spot. That was in the wrong spot. Which means we're not necessarily stopping contaminated bio sludge. Except now they don't line up with these threes. Unless... Unless... Nope, never mind. Never mind. Also, that wouldn't work very well with the beacon. Okay. Maybe I'll move these up just so that we can do this. Move these up here. Could you not? And then swap that around. That's actually fairly tidy. I think we're getting somewhere now. Yeah, I don't mind the look of this very much. Now we've got one solid in, one solid out. Um, we've already got the input fluid and output fluid. So I could just do the solids on the outside. Let's move this in a bit. See how much cozier we can make this. I suppose I could just connect this here, this here, or here, this here, this here, this here. Yeah, we could probably save some space here. Uh-oh. And then... Move that in one more tile. That's kind of looking good, I think. As long as we don't mind having no belts in the middle. And then the same thing on this end. Well, actually, it's already just... Like that. That one's not going to work. Uh, we'll see. Let's try moving it up and see what happens. That's actually totally fine. It's super consistent. Seems good. Maybe some more undergrounds like this. I definitely like that better. Yep, 
Yeah, I could just about live with that. On second thought, could I... If we just have these here... Oops. Oh, then this one's not going to touch. Not going to reach. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fairly tidy, as far as pipe spaghetti goes. Oh, crap. Uh, the middle rows are going to need belt input and output. It's not like this is one row or column. Um... We could have an absolute mess of... That doesn't even work. Absolute mess of belt like this. I could make it wider. I might have to. Oops. One, two, there we go. And then one, two, one, two, three. Nope, that's too much. No, don't undo that. Dag nabbit. One, two, and one, two. That should be as far as we can go. All right, so maybe back to using undergrounds here. Except that doesn't quite work out the way I would like. That's the basic gist of it. If we have an input belt and an output belt, there's only like one... No, there's more than one tile. We could do an input and an output like this. Output. That looks kind of weird. Something like that. And then the pipes here wouldn't have room. Uh, we would have to do something like this, perhaps? That's really weird. Maybe we could bring these in a bit? Not really. Uh, let's see how... How IO fits over here. Something like that, maybe. Or I guess if we're being consistent, it would actually be like that. So then... We need more underground belts. That might be fine, actually. That might actually be okay. Alright, 
And then over here we've got underground pipes like so. We could always do some undergrounds, but it would only it would only save like one bit of belt from being an underground. Unless we make it jump over there. But then the other side's not gonna be similar. That actually seems to work though. It's about as symmetrical as we could get. And we could just connect these and these somewhere else. Uh, so on the outside, it's obviously going to be far, far simpler to do our input-output. Something like this, for example. Because we've already got the fluid input here. Uh, and I totally forgot the fluid output on the other side. What am I doing? God damn it. Okay. Not so simple after all. How's our mech science doing? Oh. Once again, we've got about 200 something, uh, 400 something to go. Uh, let's see. Call it 450. We're looking at about four minutes. Till, I, I said this before, but about four minutes until we should be getting our first Material Science Pack 3s. Okay, so that being the case, let's do a little more design. And then... Uh, on this side, it's actually really simple. We can just, like... Do our two belts for input and output, and do different length pipes. Really simple. Really, really simple. There isn't a better way I could do that, right? Not with nine tiles, I don't think so. We've got three, five, seven. Yeah, no, I think that's about it. We could probably do this for a little bit more clarity. could actually come in closer. Fantastic. So what if we did the exact same thing on the other side? Seems good. All right. Inputs. Outputs. Or we could do it the other way around. It doesn't really matter. Wait, I thought there were two physical inputs. Nope. One in, one out, as far as solids are concerned, rather. Are the long pipes better than just underground pipes? Uh, they can be. Especially in space where we can only do length 5 underground pipe. But basically, in Factorio, the more individual pipe sections you have, uh, the slower the fluid is going to go through it. Basically, this, with three pipe sections, is equivalent to this, is equivalent to this, is equivalent to this, and so on. Oops. And 
if we have a 15, it goes all the way, well, literally 15 times the length of this thing for the same uh, number of fluid containers. Uh, and the way the game calculates fluid, it this basically is equivalent. And if you want full throughput, uh, you're going to need pumps with, well, technically just pumps straight in a line, or maybe like pumps and then one fluid container, uh, followed by another pump. Uh, to keep it fairly high, you want to have a minimal number of pipe sections between each pump. But if you're looking at like only a few hundred per second or something, uh, you really don't have to worry too much. All right. Got used to AB with a very long underground pipes. AB. AB. Crestorio 2 has some very long underground pipes, just not the space exploration stuff. Regular pipes in Crestorio 2 actually go this far. And then you've got the steel underground pipes, which uh, blow those ones out of the water a little bit. Angels and bobs, right, right, right. Thank you, Veldek. Uh, but yeah, once again, they do not want you to have decent undergrounds for space. Even though there's more space. Uh, there's, theoretically, there would be 3D space. For different directions your belts could go. Or pipes, especially. But, yep, they want you to have to build around these giant machines. It's a little bit annoying. Uh, so let's say... What was I building that around? Literally one of these machines, I think. Eight per second. Uh, shut up with the beacon. Uh, and yeah, 8 per second for biocultures. That's crazy. So, let's say we did one build like that for regular biomass. And one build like that for experimental biomass. Which is going to have the exact same fluid inputs and outputs. The only difference is... Well, there's two differences. Uh, experimental bioculture in instead of bioculture. And then some of it comes back as regular biomass. Come to think of it, I should probably put these in a line like so. We'll see. I'm pretty sure the fluid throughput is quite low. Yes, it is. And and what? So how big is our rail block compared to this? Ouchie. If we were to do like a quadruple rail block to try and fit a bunch of bioscience stuff together to avoid putting uh, the cultures into the rail network just because they have only one destination and a tiny stack size. So it's just a space thing, yes indeed. Okay, let's just get a little bit of a feel for the 
Suppose I can cut off all of that. Everything except the corners. Might be an interesting challenge doing a quad block build. Especially seeing how it's going to fit with the other blocks. Oh, not having the roundabout could actually mess up other blocks? Um, no, I think, I think trains would still find a path. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they just have to come in from a different angle. Alright, so... Okay, that's not looking as bad now. Um... So we're going to have biomass, second tier biomass, we're going to have this to support biomass, right? Eight per second nutrient vats. Wait, this is... Yeah, no, that's right. Nutrient vat gets turned into... Uh, bioculture, which goes into this. So these will this will be double perfect ratio. Cool, cool, cool. And then same, same, but different. With nutrient vat turning into experimental biomass. That's not right. Uh, not experimental biomass, experimental bioculture. Am I missing something? Eight per second nutrient vat. Only 1.33. This is the same machine. This recipe is three seconds. This one is five seconds. But it makes ten. This one makes one every three seconds. Well, that's a pretty big difference. How do we get eight per second? Oh. Fantastic. We can actually still have a perfect ratio. So this one actually needs six of these. Two, four, six. Perfect ratio, fantastic. All right, so glass, iron, and nutrient gel goes into these. And then they go into uh, to make green vats and purple vats. We're going to have to output junk data cards. This also consumes genetic data and it recycles it. We'll just do like a swap chest for that. No big deal. Um, this doesn't recycle anything, it just turns experimental genetic cards into junk at a much worse ratio. And we should have a bunch of... Why is that one negative? Must be like a very subtle rounding error. Um, but yeah, we've got a bunch of perfect ratios here now. And then we output biomass. Uh... Experimental biomass, contaminated biosludge, and contaminated cosmic water to the rail network. Do we want to do anything else while we're still in this block? I am not sure. Sandbox gameplay, indeed. What are your thoughts about sandbox? Um, very necessary if you want to really save 
ludicrous hours in running through some ideas that you have for big builds. Oh, oh, it's happening. It's happening. Material Science 3, we've got it. That's our first 60 or so. Uh, I take it back, that is not our first 60 or so. We've already delivered 200, I think. Because we're already a quarter of the way through energy beaming. And we already did the prerequisite for energy beaming that I don't know how much that cost, like 500? So, there it goes. Now we can start thinking about grabbing that Vittel Melange. I also want to move this science build because that's going to be... Well, we could probably put off crude oil core fragments for a while. But, in theory, that's where that goes. Okay. So, one block is way too small. Four blocks is, like, way too big. Um, do we want to try and fit anything else out of bioscience into this block? There's some other stuff with some really small stack sizes involved, right? Well, let's for one thing look at significant biomass. That actually requires experimental biomass. And we've got bio sludge in the block as well. So we could bring in Vitalic Reagent and Neural Gel up here somewhere. Excuse me. Uh, also, I wanted to check where else these go. Data cards. Data cards, data cards. Okay, I think we get the idea. You can also turn them into bio sludge and crude oil, though I wouldn't probably bother with that. Bioscience is such a tangled mess. Like, all of the other sciences, you can pretty much just... Uh, do some modular separate builds that take a bunch of inputs, have outputs sent to rail, take from rail. Uh, which technically you could do all of that with uh, bioscience, but the minuscule stack sizes really discourage that. Basically, bioscience is by far the most incestuous of the sciences. But I don't mean to say it has a family tree that is just a log. Uh, it has a family tree that is tangled spaghetti. If that makes any sense whatsoever, I'm not entirely sure. I think I'll have to think on this one. Like, I don't think I'll do this whole build today. All right. How are we doing for research? 82%? Oh, I think it's time to get ready. I think it's time to get ready to actually do some energy beaming. Um, also, I should check on our Holmium and stuff. While we've been just vibing. Quietly designing things. Uh, let's see how cables are doing. Much but jeez. One of the things I love about this smaller block size is how things go from zero to a hundred. Like blink and you'll miss it. We go from being starved of holmium cable to completely saturated. The same thing happened with several other Oh, and we didn't miss it by much, because there's only like um 734 out of 16k Holmium plate here, so it's still waiting for another delivery. Energy beaming for Bida clearing, indeed. 
Uh, which means we can definitely crank back up our requests for Holmium accumulators. Uh, which we should have, you know, which we want to keep high anyway, so we have plenty to make outposts. We've already got a million Holmium solar panels on the construction ship. Let me just check what's missing here. It should just be accumulators. Also some blue belt. And then we're not really using the laser artillery turrets anymore. For some reason we're missing spaceship clamps and logistic bots of all things. What is our autocraft doing? We're supposed to have... We do have a hundred spaceship clamps here. Oh. And then... And then what? What was I doing? Blue belt. Why don't we have blue belt here? Did I stop trying to make it? Did I ever try to make blue belt up here? Yeah, I did. I switched this off because we were probably stuck on some resources. Okay. Uh, it's a bit of a problem making the loaders because... They get a higher priority, and they use up all the slots and block other things from being built. Even though we need belt to make loader, loader comes before belt, which is a bit of a problem. Maybe I should redo the uh, autocrafter in the mall. Get away from these giant machines. Because crafting speed really isn't the problem. It's always material shortage or bots moving around. Uh, and it's always better to have more different things that we can be trying to make in parallel. I think I'll just go and get some blue belt. We don't even need any blue belt. We're going to the to the sun. All right. So what are we missing? A bunch of holmium accumulators. Since there's no space elevator that we'll be putting at the sun, I don't know if we actually need any. Uh, we definitely need a million scaffolding, which we've got. I don't know why we don't have logi robots. Which we don't need right now. Probably because we're just not requesting enough. Yeah. Oh, that's fine then. Easily remedied. And it changes immediately. Wow, look at that go. Holy crap. Let's see that on the graph. Logistic robot production. That, that is quite the graph. That's not a spike, it's a needle. So with the Sun Orbit Station, you're starting your Dyson Sphere program, indeed. Space elevators to the surface of the Sun. Perfect, let's do it. Alright, it's actually a short trip as well. Um, I think we should just go. Let me grab some more solar panels before I do go. That'll do. And a little bit more. Fantastic. Alright, Calidus Orbit, here we come. Am 
might just double check. It is, in fact, Calidus. Yeah, it's always Calidus that's at home star, right? Energy weapon 9 is creeping along. Fantastic. I can't believe we've got energy beaming before we get our, our very first Vitima lunge, but uh, this playthrough is a bit different. Oh, it also means uh, we can find the very last worm hidden on... I think we already did Granus, we did Xorion, it's Gibil. No? Verb T? I could have sworn I had an outpost. Uh, it must have been in another system. In the Kalmea system. Stormhurst. Yeah, 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 by the threat 7%. We've cleared the whole thing, but somewhere on this planet, there's like two worms. That I haven't been able to find. Despite spending a significant amount of time scouring the entire planet looking for them. And putting everything in range of artillery turrets... I think we can target it even from here, it'll just be weak. Only thing to watch out for is accidentally scorching our own stuff. What is that? Sifa 13 Calidus. Why... Why is Sifa confused about the sun? Could it be that it's not worms but biters? Nah. They all would have attacked by now. Oh, also, we can easily find their spawners. Um, with debug options, you can find... Show enemy expansion chunk uh, candidates. So if we look at Nalvis, go to the map. Here are some biters. Turn that on. Uh, it's very, very easy to find them. And where there's spawners, there's biters. And where there are not spawners, there pretty much are not biters. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't tell us where all the worms are. We'll be there in 31 seconds. Fantastic. Let's have a look at Calidus Orbit. It feels weird that there isn't actually a like a ground surface to to jump to. Confirm hostile extinction. Fantastic. Solar power is fifteen twenty one percent. I feel like that's less than I got last time. Had problems with emitters on Calidus. He forgot to check them, and whenever anything happened. Chat was always suggesting to check what's going on on Calidus. Oh, I see. Alright, where is zero, 00? Does it even matter? I'm not building like a... Is it Calidus or Calidus Orbit? Zero, zero, L, it does, or a bit. Uh, I'm not going to build a space elevator here, obviously. But maybe I could leave room for something special in the very middle? I don't know. Also, also, since they're practically free now, I could actually just spam space platform plating. Um, you know, just to be fancy. Just to make it look nice. I know some... I know some of the stuff I want to have at Calidus Orbit eventually. It's basically all just energy beaming. Uh, and eventually we might want to do that stupid... 
puzzle. Um, so we'd need the... What's it called? Why are my pots not active? That thing that sucks up like 100 megawatts at least. No, it's way more than that. It's like... 100 gigawatt or something? It's on a massive scale even when you're using solar panels next to the sun. Uh, regardless... I have too many flat solar panels in my inventory. There we go. Whoops. Nice, bright, white-ish floors because it's not going to be bright enough next to the sun. There we go. And then... That's zero, zero. Kind of want everything to line up because I'm a weirdo. Uh, we need to space out some. Where's my. There it is. If we off center this slightly. Oh, let me just steal from myself. I'll grab that one blueprint that has the. has the um, Holmium accumulators included, and I'll just remove the accumulators. You really want to be reflective near the sun, indeed. Alright, down this way. Whoopsie. Where do I want to put all the energy beaming? I definitely don't want to end up with the same random spaghetti mess of energy beaming as I did with the last playthrough. I want it to look organized. I forgot, we're going to have to come to Calidus Orbit for a bunch of, well, not a whole lot of stuff, but, um, star probes? Where is it? FNEI probe. Uh, to make star probe data, we need to bring a space probe rocket silo here. And then we need to launch space probes from it. And I guess we could use the same system we're already using with the uh, LTN-style spaceships. But honestly, we really don't need a, a large amount of storage space. Like, it, it, that would be a lot of data. Align it with y equals zero or x equals zero? Oh uh, yeah, I did already. So the command is square bracket gps equals zero comma zero or whatever coordinates comma the name of the surface uh, and it likes capitals and then you can just do a ping with coordinates. All right, where's that blueprint that I made? I have absolutely no idea. Um, it's not in here, is it? Alright, let's just steal from one of our outposts. Speaking of which, I need to go to verb T. Right about... Where was the middle one? Here?
Yeah, here. Out there. Except I want all of these to be solar panels. I'm pretty sure there's going to be nothing like the space elevator with the really ridiculous spikes. Nor are we going to have anything that's super dependent on careful timing. At this outpost. Probably. We'll see. We can always change it. What's this? Oh, some big ones. What hath Veldak wrought? Uh, yes. I gather those are defense installations. And then what's that? Energy beams? Yes, energy beams. Very tidy. I completely forgot that we need uh, media defense installations here. Whoops. Maybe I shouldn't be building the solar panels out yet. Uh, ammo is cheap. It's fine. I'll just bring some. We, we, we've got how much ammo here? Enough for an outpost. 402. It's an okay start. Maybe I should just leave a dock here for the uh, construction ship. Okay. Uh, there's not really anything I can do with this space. You know what? Accumulators. Because why not? What else are we going to put there? Also, do I really not have a lighted... I remember dropping some of these manually, but I'm surprised I don't seem to have a lighted pylon substation. There we go. And more of this. You know, I could kind of cheat, because we're never going to be able to see most of the uh, space platform plating. It would slow down my walk speed when I go over the flat solar panels, though. Is that all of my... stuff? It is. Yeah, I don't want to use the space platform scaffold anymore. Or at least not here. It's so cheap uh, to upgrade to the plating now. Alright, let's go back to Verbti Orbit and finish that little bit of the build that I missed before. And I forgot to put media defenses. Whoops. I fly everywhere. I use legs only in order. Uh, jetpack isn't smoking around me. Indeed. Let me just grab some water. And how far are we? Two minutes. Energy weapon damage 9 is already at 12%. It's one of the... It is a very expensive uh, research, actually. So we're actually doing pretty well researching that science go burr. Cool, cool, cool. What does it take to get energy for star probe? That's pretty appropriate, actually. And material for, we don't know yet. Wait, we really don't know yet? Huh. 
Let's unlock that next. Catalog 4. Heavy assembly. Last playthrough, uh, there were so few things to be made by heavy assembly that I never bothered, like, getting it with prod modules. Um, but yeah. How much energy science do we have saved up? Uh, a bit? I guess. Are we running through a backlog, or are we keeping up, I wonder? Okay, uh, let's look at production versus... Consumption. We are consuming... 38 per minute, and we're making more than that. So far, at least, it seems like we could do this indefinitely. Nice. 41 seconds till we're at empty orbit. And... I should probably go around picking up stuff like these, uh... What? Crushed Immocyte, random core fragments. There's a bunch of random core fragments up here as well. 31,000 Holmanite core fragments. Something to do off stream. We are here. Give me those accumulators. And now we can be doubly sure that the spikes from the space elevator are not going to cause any problems with the delicate timing for our combinators. Oh, umbrellas. I should probably be delivering some of those to some of our outposts as well. I haven't actually made any... Uh, Energy beaming stuff yet, either. We need a bunch of stuff that should already be in the mall. Oh, wait, we need superconductive cable. We'll have to do a build for that. And that's the only new thing. The rest is pretty damn straightforward to make with the autocrafter. Assuming it ever catches up with all of its duties. Um, so let's turn off our auto landing. Actually, we're going to be there in 12 seconds. Let's just land. And then once we do... Jump into the editor. Okay, so I'm pretty pretty sure superconductive can only be made in space manufactory. What the heck is that recipe though? We need nano material as well. Presumably we can make it if it's needed for something we've unlocked. Okay. Uh, oh no, this is one of those other recipes. This is for making nano-engineering data. It recycles... Um, that's kind of weird. Nanomaterial, blank data card, and particle stream in. We sometimes get nanomaterial, heat shielding, LDS... Superconductive cable scrap or contaminated scrap back. That's different. 
Um, but yeah, it's very, very simple actually. Holmium cable, granite rod in, superconductive cable out, and of course, thermofluid is involved. Very, very simple build. This will be the last one for tonight. Um, I haven't really recovered from... I didn't have proper rest during the heat wave. Probably better if I don't make myself half asleep for a stream and a half. Or a stream and a bit. Superconductive cable. Um, let's grab... Let us grab a wide bacon. Although, from my experience with superconductive cable, it's going to be very easy to make enough. Assuming we have no shortage of holmium cable, for example. Do it like this. And like this. And two solids in, one solid out. What kind of rate are we looking at? Negative 70% power consumption. Oh, that's really slow. That is really, really slow. I'm sure we're not going to need that much superconductive. But, uh... What does it go into? Mole stuff? Mole stuff? Mole st That's not mole stuff. But we only need 300 for a tier 9 module. That's not that much. Uh, mole stuff, mole stuff. Ooh, portable fusion reactor. I kind of want to try that. No, I think I already looked at the stats, and it's actually incredibly disappointing. Personal lasers in this mod set consume so much energy that it's just really questionable to even bother with them. Three point two megawatt. That is sadly pretty small compared to the cost of personal lasers. Uh, we can make deep space belts. Don't really care. Five hundred for antimatter reactor. Don't care too much about the rate for that. A little bit for high temp turbine generators. Uh, compact beacons. I'm, I'm really surprised at how late we get compact beacons. Really, really surprised. Like, by the time you get them, you've kind of designed almost everything. Like, a less bad version of deep space belts. Uh, we need them for energy beaming, of course. Um, what kind of volume? 100, 200, 50. It's not that bad, actually. Probably this is more than enough. Actually, I don't love 1.36 per second with a stack size of, what, 50? Yeah, let's double it if we can. Uh, that's a big if. Okay, it's literally impossible to fit double that in the half block. I could do... Hmm... I could put this in the middle. No, I don't think I like that. I don't think there's a universe where I am a 
Move this to the middle of the block, Enjoya. Okay, how big is this? Seven tiles. Maybe not like that on this side. Oh, I would have to do I-O on the side for solids. Don't really want to do it that way. Uh, let's just do this, and if we want, if we need to double it, we'll use the other half of the block. It's fine. This is fine. Big fluid container. How fast do we go through the fluid? Super slow, pretty much. And bulk rail loaders down here. Fantastic. We need holmium cable and cryonite rod. And we'll do... I think we'll do the inputs on the outside, just like with the fluid. These can be sevens. This one a little bit different. That's actually pretty tidy. And then output the old fashioned way. All right, and we'll do thermo fluid output down here. Into the train, out of the train. Wait, what? Yeah, no, they face north both times. What am I doing? Don't forget the green wire here, and here. Tell LTN what we've got, otherwise it'll send infinite stuff. Holmium cable, cryonite rod. We do have cryonite rods that we've brought up space elevator already, right? Surely. Surely that's the case. Let's have a look. Bionite rod. There it is. Inanimate carbon rod. Fantastic. Get that stuff off the ground. And I might want to move all of this over a little bit. Make it line up with our stations as much as possible. Uh, since this is going to be so slow, we could definitely just load it this way. Nice and neat. 1.4 train loads can be accumulated here. And that's not going to be able to fit there. This is fine. Fair enough. And 
then one more of these this way. Does that line up with the middle? Yeah, it does. We'll do some sevens here as well. And then... That's it. You know, I, I really didn't need to do the input that way. We can make this super easy mode. Very uniform. Oh, that's... that's... that's a bit tragic. Three, five, and one. Well, that one fits. Let's do it like this. Actually, no, it's fine. This is fine. That's what we'll pretend. And I kind of want to move these down a little bit, just for consistency. Or something that pretends to be consistency. Alright, that's pretty tidy. Let's clean it up a little bit more. Don't forget to remove this. And then... Uh, add a bit more scaffolding back in, so it doesn't look tacky or anything. How many tiles is this? 22. And then down here. Alright, let's do some cheat inputs. Set filters blacklist, check container, shift right click, shift left, and it doesn't work on this thing. I'm pretty sure it's super cold, demo fluid, maybe. And there's our build. Very pretty. Alright, we need to do some LTN shenanigans, uh, Holmium Cable, we'll just do two train loads of each, 50, 100, double it, Cryonite Rod, actually, Cryonite Rod stacks to 200, we're really not going to need that much, both of these are so slow, Cryonite Rod is half the speed that Holmium Cable gets consumed, and four times the stack size. Um, it takes more than two minutes to go through one stack of Crynite Rods. So I think we'll just go for Crynite Rod... Oops. Kerai? Crynite Rod. Um... 110 stacks. That'll be more than enough buffer when we're getting low. And we'll probably just do the same for Holmium Cable. 
Well, how about like 120 stacks? Since we go through that twice as fast and with a quarter the stack size. That'll still be more than enough. Let's see, how, how long does it take to go through a thousand? Uh, 1.36 per second. No, it was double that. Two point something. The train only has six and a bit minutes to bring Holmanite cable when we're running low. Do you think it'll manage? Probably. Fulminate cable, Rhinite rod, and super cool thermofluid goes into, I believe that is, has to be an electromagnetic facility, right? And out comes superconductive cable. Beautiful. Superconductive cable provider is our pickup station name. Provide stack threshold. Oh, this should be uh, this should be high priority just because we've got thermofluid to pick up. So that's that. And just in case I want a short train to pick up uh, superconductive cable, we'll do short train there. Oh, I think we're done with that build. Let's make it happen. Blueprint. Superconductive cable. Snap to grid. Did I remove the cheat items? Yes, I did. Just as well, because if I have to right click something here, I have to do this again. For some reason, it gets rid of the odd numbered offsets. All right. Rotate works, snap to works. Where do I want to put this? Probably near Holmium Cable or something. Which I didn't actually put in here. I guess we'll fix that at some point. Alright, where are we going to build? Superconductive cable. Once Holmium Cable, Cryonite Rod, and some fluid. It's incredibly slow, it probably really doesn't matter where we build it. Does it go into any science or anything? Right click... Mall, 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 mall... Mag... I, I almost said magic canister. Uh, which is not too far from the truth. We will need those canisters at some point, but as far as superconductive cable goes, they're quite cheap. Dimensional anchor, that's that thing I was trying to remember the name of. Knack accumulator. Well, you can use it to make spell elevator cable. Now that might be a neat trick. Four aeroframe poles makes uh, 12 spell elevator cable this way. Output fluid? What about output fluid? Oh, did I not connect it? Alright, we'll fix it. Um, but yeah, I'm not seeing anything, like, science-y, where we need high throughput of superconductive cable, relatively. 
we really can just put this build anywhere. Output fluid. True. Uh, I think we can squeeze it in here. One off. One off. Let's do it like this. Actually, that would sort of look more consistent. And then these can just connect over here. Fantastic. Alright, let's do the blueprint again, I guess. Superconductive cable. Uh, tiles, train stop names, 86251. Perfect. And chuck it into components. Out with the old. Now, where do we build? Maybe relatively close to the ball. We've already done Astro 3. Astro 4 can probably go like here or something. So maybe here? I'd have to move this stuff. That's not actually a problem. Yeah, that's fine. Alright. That's going to need a little fix. Let's take our scaffolding train for a little ride. And then construction train is going to need, I believe it was like 8 or 16. Electromag facilities. It's 12. I should know that by now. We're still trying to load... St no, we're good. Uh, electromagnetic facility. There we go. Fantastic. Fuck yourself over here, please. And... That should be it. What are these bots doing? Just plain SE. Only thing that I know that needs it are the processors. Processors? Quantum processors. That's Holmium Cable. Or was there some other kind of higher tier processor? A uh, Naquium processor? Doesn't actually need any superconductive. Maybe that's changed from vanilla SE. Let's go deliver some modules. Whoa, the UPS. Because we're placing all the signals. Uh, did I just run out of fuel? I think I did. Alright, let's try not to get squished. There's our modules. Do we have crinite rods and cable on the way? I think we do. I think we do. That was... That's going to be a very short wait for some superconductive cable. And 
here comes the rods. Fantastic. And there's our first super conductive cable for the run. Albion Line, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Cool, cool, cool. Why am I stuck? Oh no. It's fine. Uh, so I don't have jetpack. I'm gonna have to drift back. Maybe I shouldn't have made that imbalanced. It's probably fine. Don't get squished by a train. Fantastic. I'm surprised how fast I can go with no fuel here. Alright. Give to me some SRF, please. Beautiful. Alright, so next... <laughs> uh... Don't don't launch with me on the ship, please. Um I need a taxi. Preferably before this ship leaves. Wait for passenger present. Indeed. Maybe I should make some safety gates everywhere. Here's our taxi. And back to the mall with you. I wouldn't have said that was the closest spaceship, though. Maybe it's like the closest spaceship to zero zero or something. All right, let's somewhat carefully grab our corpse and put on life support. Oh, I gotta be careful of the run speed there. Damn. Okay. And we're back. Everything is fine. This is fine. Uh, we are going to ask for... one trainload of superconductive cable. We're going to add a tag for it. And we're going to see just how long that's going to take. So far, we've done like 230. Uh, 5,000 divided by... 1.36. 3,676 seconds. Over an hour. That kind of stings a little bit. How much do we actually need for some energy beaming stuff? I could just go pick up some to start with. Alright, let's add another constant combinator over here. And we need energy beam emitter. Whoops. Energy beam chamber. Energy beam injector. Energy beam receiver. And just make a few. Why am I... Oh no, I have no life support. Uh... Um... It's fine, it's fine. Let's just vibe in a train for a minute. Uh... We only need like... One or two or three chambers for each beam emitter, right? Depends on how much power we want to put into one. Stacks to only 10. Let's just go for like 50 of these. And this 
This monstrosity does stack to 50. Even though every single one of these adds a gigawatt of power. Sucked out of your power network and pushed into the energy beam. Alright, so we're just waiting on superconductor cable. 200 for an emitter. Uh, 50 for each of these. And... 100 for each of these, even though they're much more common. Maybe I should just wait for the delivery. Then again, um, if we go grab it early, we can go make some... If I'm careful about del deliberately making some energy beam stuff, um, I can go and deliberately make the bare minimum to do some energy beaming and we can start cooking moss garden let's go downstairs go get some more life support whoops that looked like they were going to collide Okay, I can get out of here without life support, right? And then... Gimme, gimme. And then, could you please go... Wait, stop. Halt, halt. halt. Back up the elevator, please. And nowhere else. I could actually leave it like that. Because um, it's never going to be able to go to the Hagen Up station. Where did it go? Damn, that was fast. Where, where did our little train go? Speedy. Um, but yeah, I'd like to just remove this tacky bit of random crap. Uh, we already have. Over a thousand superconductive cable. It's actually maybe a bit faster than I thought. Or at least viscerally what I thought. I do realize I forgot to put some media defenses over here. Hasn't taken a scratch yet, at least. Um, but yeah, it's about time to finish up for today anyway. Where's our belt? What is this? What's it called? Uh, Superior. Superior transport belt 1k. That's looking pretty good, actually. So we can almost take Superior transport belt for granted now. Very cool. Okay. Should probably start looking for someone to raid. I don't really have anything I, that I want to cram into like five minutes right now. Except... Look at how our energy research is going. Energy, science pack three. Uh, there's been a bit of a dip here for some reason. But other than that, it seems pretty consistent. It's, the dip is... The consumption dipped when the production dipped. I guess that does make sense. Just depends on which order of cause and effect that you were imagining. Uh, but yeah, it looks like we'll have no trouble reaching Energy Weapon 9 in good time. Holmium Cable is... Looking pretty bad, actually. Uh... What is this guy doing? Plus 
plastic is bad. What the hell happened? Uh, I love discovering problems like this at the last minute of the stream. <laughs> Did we run out of oil or something? Like, not on the planet, but the... Our oil patches may have run dry, pretty much. I think that's probably the case. Entity, pump jack. There's hardly any oil here. There's no oil here. There's no oil here. Oh, we can straighten this. That's nice. Uh, there's still two mil, seven mil over here. Is there something wrong with it? Or is it just not keeping up? Because it's like doing all the work now. That's probably it. And this one also has... Both of those have 7 mil. I thought they were the same one. They are the same one. It's just different sides of the same area. Okay. Uh, evidently, we probably need to do more oil drilling. Um, that's where we're getting our coal. There is coal here. What the hell? It's kind of low and crude, but... There is coal here, at least for the moment. Where are you going with that? Make plastic. Okay, it probably just caught up. Um, but yeah, if only so that I don't have to... place a bunch of pump jacks... again. I mean, I don't have to do it very often, but I'm still kind of inclined to go set up... uh, crude oil core fragments. From Eshu. I'm curious as to see how much oil that we actually get out of that with a 1.2k radius moon. I was reviewing pyramids and I checked one of ruins I visited before. Looks like I forgot two arcospheres in chests and ruins. Nice. Yeah, I'm hoping this one little oil moon is actually enough if we suck it dry. Actually, let me check something before we go. Um, not spaceships. Do we even have... It's literally only Eshu. We haven't found any more oil core fragment planets. Okay. Um, targeted zone discovery and change it to oil because since we've already got all this technology well the spaceship travel distance is obviously going to be a lot shorter so it's probably still a good idea to tap that oil moon um, but nonetheless I would like to I would like to find a planet that is super close to the interstellar map or a moon, rather. Can you even get planets that are crude oil based, or is it just moons? Uh, I'd like to find some of those and just jump in via Foenestra and have a big radius on the planet. Super like this. If this was oil, super short travel distance. The more I think of it. I'm beginning to wonder if I ever saw crude oil outside of the Calidus system. The core fragments. I'm sure we'll find some. It's probably fine. Um, but yeah, let's see who's streaming maybe SEK2. If we're lucky. Uh, Mr. Dane. Oh, Ribba, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 
Uh, what's this? Fortifying main base then Vulcanite. Relearning the basics. Anyone doing both? Probably not. What is EDM? Email marketing campaign? Electronic direct mail? Surely not. <laughs> Surely they're referring to something else. Let's have a quick peek, shall we? Uh, I'm not a fan of that giant animated banner up the top. Uh, let's drop in on Dane today, why not? Oh, we could drop in on Diablo, it's been a while. Cities of Earth. It's kind of grindy. Uh, let's let's electronic dance music maybe. Let's go for more SE if we can. All right, thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of the Blueprints if you're into that. If you have any questions or anything, by all means. And till next time, stay safe. Tomorrow we'll be continuing with space exploration, Crestorio two. Uh, wherein, well, I might chase some oil off stream. It's not the most exciting uh, process, just making another oil field. And I've got a couple of other little, like, cleanup jobs that I may or may not do in the meantime. Uh, but we also have a outpost or two that we still need to upgrade. Make that three if you count Muir. But yeah, energy beaming. Coming to a SEK2 playthrough near you. Thanks to Yex, Veldak, thanks for hanging out. And everyone else as well. Alright, take care guys. It's not all about racing. There are so many weird things you can pull in that game.